it. Like, what are we doing? <laughs> Welcome back to This Is A Takeover. My name is David Hensley. I'm the owner and creative director of Long Walk Productions, and I am here to introduce your hosts, Shelby Deathray Patterson and Gina, bless your heart, Brafford. Thank you, David, and welcome to This Is A Takeover. I'm Shelby Ray Patterson. And I'm Gina Brafford. And we are here to talk about All In 2023, but before we start this card. Oh. I feel like there is some news that needs to be shared yes. with the group. So here's the thing. I <laughs> want you to go ahead and talk about I'm going to let you know when because oh. it's actually important as okay. to the order of events. So just so listeners know, if you are listening to this, we are actually recording this earlier than we normally like record immediately um, the day after yes yeah, so we are recording this the day after all in normally our schedules are so crazy we yeah. can't get together until like the baby uh, yes and she makes things very <laughs> unpredictable right so the fact that i'm able to be here the day after is insane huzzah and the fact that i don't even know about this news yet but is you also crazy and it's been killing me all day you've been a fantastic best friend and she, i greatly appreciate it. i asked her because I texted her this morning. I said, did you hear about the drama? And she goes, what drama? And I said, don't you dare look at anything. And I said, you know, I have ways. And I said, yeah, don't you dare. <laughs> if you really want, if you really want it to be as awesome as of a so reveal. You're, so you're going to make me wait even longer. It's I've not been as, waiting all day. It's not as long as you think. Okay. I promise you. Okay, fine. I promise you. Okay. <laughs> after, <laughs> after the Samoa Joe match and punk match. Okay, fine. I promise. So fine, we're just gonna go ahead and jump right in because I want to know Let's this go. freaking news. Hey y'all, hey. Okay, so we had two matches on the pre-show. Yes, we did. Well, so to me, it's such a stark and weird contrast to go from a WWE pay-per-view where it's just like a roundtable discussion. Yeah. And you don't ever really have anything except NXT is kind of bringing the pre-show matches back. Yeah. But even then, like it's they're not, not the really same. announced. Like, they kind yeah. of are like, oh, yeah, by the way, this is happening. It's like, like a last surprise. minute. But to have two matches on a pre-show. And to have them advertised. Mm -hmm. like, like, they're pretty big matches because yeah. you had the ROH tag title match, which, which is huge and yeah. has, like, two of the biggest guys in the company in it. Double clothesline. That, I will talk about that yeah, in a minute. Will. The fact that they're <laughs> able to get that, that over is insane to me. And then you also I'm have over the here with the kangaroo kick. Well, that that's also true. <laughs> but then you have the FTW championship match. Yes. Also on the pre-show. Yes. So I feel like having two matches and then having so you have one at the beginning and then one at the end of the pre-show and then you have all of your hype for the pay-per-view yeah. in between yeah i feel like that's really smart it was really smart and it made me pay attention more mm -hmm. but i think the placement really was because i yeah like it wasn't until you just said that where i was like i yeah i never think of it that way i don't i don't yeah because normally it's just here's all of our promotion stuff that you've seen 700 times i think if they would have switched the two matches yes but that was also probably selfish because we were i got stuck in a drive through line yeah after church on sunday Lord. and i missed the first match which yes. i was really upset about because yes. it was really the only one i wanted to watch on the pre-show and, and we even said we were like how much you want to bet that that's going to be the first one and it was and it was and i was sitting because in the drive through line and didn't even occur to me that it was on youtube so i could have watched it while i was waiting oh i know oh that occurred to me halfway through and i was like oh i'm just gonna miss it and i'll just have to you know but no, like I could have watched it on YouTube in my car, but you know, that's either here or there. I didn't think of that either. Mom brain is still very real, guys. <laughs> it is, it will be real probably for the rest of my life. I don't even so. have an excuse. I'm sorry. I'll, I'll give, I'll give you my excuse. That's it's fine. That's fair, thanks. You're very involved in Lottie's <laughs> life, so like you can, you can use that excuse oh, if you want. Oh, that's funny. Oh my gosh. But so we have the ROH tag titles as our first match on Zero Hour, which is what they call their pre-show. Which the fact that they even call their pre-show something is 
funny to me. It's, they got to label a lot of things. They do. They have to label everything. <laughs> like everything has to have a name. And it's like, it's just a pre-show. It's just just it's call it a pre-show. pre-show. Like what does zero hour even mean? <laughs> like it's like, are you saying it's like not enough? Like zero? Like it makes me think like that's a negative connotation. Well, you know how like at first everything, like all their pay-per-views were based off of like gambling. Yeah. In Vegas, right? Yeah. So I don't know. I mean, All In was based off mm-hmm. of that, right? So I don't know what it, someone will tell us I'm probably sure. what that means, but I have no idea. Yes. Um, so it's against Aussie Open versus Better Than You, baby. <laughs> Better Than You, <laughs> which baby. Which is MJF and Adam Cole, which. Can we just talk about <sighs> when this started, how we laughed? Oh, absolutely. How we laugh. This we was like, going to oh. be, okay, they're going to turn on each other in the first round of this oh, and blind like, well, eliminator second. tournament. Yeah. Because they were in the middle of a feud, mm-hmm. right? So, obviously, they're going to turn. MJF is going to pretend that he's his friend. And mm-hmm. then, at the like most opportune moment, if they even get close to the final, like he's going to turn on them. Absolutely. He's going to do one thing wrong, and he's just going to turn on them. But then they make it through the tournament. And then not only do they become the most like lovable tag team. The cutest best friends. Sorry. But they become Sorry, best friends. actual best friends. Yeah. And their finishing maneuver for their <laughs> tag finisher is a double clothesline where they hold hands. <laughs> like I just don't It's the best. It's the same MJF did this with um I think it was a, um, oh gosh, what it was a headlock takeover, takedown or headlock takeover or something. It was it's a simple move that he said I can beat anybody with, and it was his whole thing with Ricky Starks. Yes, um, yes, there it is. Sorry, and he was saying I can, you know, I can beat you with this simple takedown maneuver, and he did, yeah. and that was the thing, and he got that move over, which is usually just like a setup. For yeah. another bigger finisher. It's the same with the double clothesline. Yeah. Like a clothesline is it's like oh, a nothing like move. It like it knocks you down for a second and then you get back up. Well, it's something that wrestlers use in training yeah. when they're just starting out. Like they're that's running the ropes. Yeah. Is seeing if you can take like multiple clotheslines. Like that's a that's a very popular like transition phase in a match. And they made it their finisher. <laughs> like I and, and they, the kangaroo kick. They made it to where there's a double clothesline t-shirt that is one I, of the highest selling t-shirts on AEW I shop. I want to talk to the finance person and be like, how much money have y'all got like just alone from this, mm-hmm. from this storyline? And I'm sure it was something because MJF came up with the other one. Like, I'm sure he was like, hey, oh. let's just see if we can get this, this oh, yeah. move over. And People chant it now. Double they chant double clothesline. clothesline. And they also have a t shirt now for kangaroo kick. I'm buying it. I they do. It is a kangaroo it. kick with boxing gloves on. Yes. Is the is the shirt black? It uh, I don't know. But it has a it has the scarf. Like he's wearing the scarf. Shut up, I'm buying it yes. now. You know it's probably black though. <laughs> All of their shirts are black. I won't look it up, I won't look it up, I won't look it up. But um I just I feel like this match was short, but it was on the pre-show, so it kind of I guess it kind of has to be right. But I feel like it could have gone on longer, and I would have been just fine with that. Oh sure, but, but they had a lot of exposition to get through and to they, try to sell the pay-per-view, and they couldn't have gone on too long because they had the main event. Yeah, I, so I was thinking they could have switched this mm-hmm. and made it so that way, like it still would have been it enough makes, time. It makes people watch the whole pre-show. To get to the end. That's fair. But, I, I mean. I feel like, like truthfully, though, like these are nitpicky things. Because oh, it is. there was nothing, like, you know, wrong. Oh, there was nothing wrong with no, this match No, no, no. This match was fantastic. And Look, I'm just going to say this. Good gracious. That man's ass is bodacious. <laughs> Aussie o- Open. I have to remember. Hang on. I have I don't, to make sure. I don't know their names. So it's um, Kyle Fletcher and Mark Davis. And I, I think, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm is, it, is it Davis? I think Davis is the mm. bodacious ass. Because Sounds like a bodacious name. Good gravy. <laughs> like, he's already just a tree trunk of a man. Right. And then it's like, cake. 
I'm so, I mean, girls use that as a as a move all the time, yeah. right? Like EO uses it. He could um, he could hip check Tony, someone. Tony, oh, uses Tony, it, right? Like, why doesn't he use that? Hip because, checking, right? Isn't that what it's called? Because if he did, I think they'd go into the next century. That's true. I think they would. <laughs> like, like when <laughs> Keith Lee threw at him. <laughs> Just oh. yeeting him right yep. into the crowd. That's what would happen. But This I'm, match was awesome. We have new ROH tag champs. We do! With a combination kangaroo kick double clothesline. <laughs> That's what won this match. That's fantastic. Which I, I called this one. Yeah, Because yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like... They have to win this, yeah. right? Because one, I like Aussie Open, yeah, but they're they're not known. No, no, no. Right, and they 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 need... were known for being with Osprey. Yeah, but they haven't been with Osprey exactly. in a while because he's been on a singles run right now. So they've been linked together for a long time. But yeah. I don't I don't think they're people see them synonymous anymore. Yeah. And they need exposure for ROH. Absolutely. Because if they they need more eyes on ROH. Mm-hmm. So I think having the titles on MJF and Adam and the way that the main event played out makes it so that way there's going to be more exposure on Dynamite. Absolutely. Because they're going to take the titles there. They will probably be on ROH yep. as well. So I, I, I think it was it would have been a dumb move to have them not win definitely um i mean at the time that i wrote my notes i hadn't put a score because i hadn't seen it yet but i gave i give it a four absolutely i mean i yes. i would have given it higher if it was longer oh yeah I but mean, I, five more minutes ten more minutes yeah could easily have been a 4.5 i'm excited to see where it goes honestly oh i feel like this feud can easily go back to roh and that can like start mm-hmm. both of their storylines very easily yeah so I mean, moving on to FTW Championship, you have yes. Jack Perry versus Hook. And this one, it was like, eh, mm-hmm. to me. Like, Perry came out in a limo, mm-hmm. and they brawled on top of that. And he has this new heel persona, which I'm still not, like, 100% on board with. I'm just, so. I'm just really, I don't know. Like, I liked Jungle Boy a lot. But I could see that that was going nowhere, mm-hmm. especially now that Christian has moved on. Yeah. Right. And he's moved on in yeah. a big way. Yeah. So that's a whole other storyline that I also want to see come to a, a, a head. Oh, absolutely. But that's for another. We'll talk about that later. But like, I don't know. And it the, the whole like real glass comment, like, and I know what that is about mm-hmm. because I had heard reports of heat with Jack Perry and CM Punk backstage so and he yes. said something about on collision jack perry wanted to use real glass in a promo mm-hmm. and cm punk shot it down and yes. said no it's too dangerous and apparently that didn't set well with perry and guess, there was an argument backstage or whatever. I just thought the comment, nobody knew what he was talking about. Yeah. You know, so unless you were so far into the dirt sheets, like you wouldn't have known that that was, I, I had to look it up. Yeah. And like you said, I get Google notifications on my phone. Yeah. Like it was such a weird placement. And he was like, see that real glass, Crimea River. And I'm like, okay, really? <laughs> The whole Crimea River thing just really turned me off. <laughs> I was like, okay, if you really wanted me to not like you as a heel, like, I'm there. Because that that was a really stupid thing to say. I think, so, okay, so I'm going to go ahead and say that was part of the the news. So now that you know that, that's yeah. fine. Yeah. Um, but, yes, so I'll, I'm just going to go ahead and we're going to talk about it. Okay, fine. So after this match, Jungle Boy walked out. And Punk was right there because he was going to be the next match. Yeah, because he was the first match on the card. And so they started fighting. Like actual fighting? Right there, physical altercation. My God. Literal physical altercation. I yes, a, David. I had a feeling that yes. that was something, that it had something to do. Like, I need him so, to, first off, I need him to not only stop picking fights with people backstage, but I need him to stop physically fighting people backstage because first it was the young bucks yes and now it's jack perry because this is the thing look all right if if i'm I'm gonna try 
and pull a Robert Bradford and, and put myself in the position of both parties here. Let's go ahead and say that Punk and the Bucks have been just fighting for forever, right? Like they've just already, like they've always had beef and it just came to a head. There is no reason whatsoever for this grown ass man to physically fight this, this, this very young man. This child. <laughs> Who is He's not a, a hot-headed, you know, young, like, wrestler. Like, y- you as the, the better, quote, better, because right now you're not. You're a piece of shit. <laughs> the better, bigger man. You put your hands on a child. Essentially, I know he's, for nothing. I know he's nothing. not a child. I know he's I know. not actually a child, but no. he's in his twenties, so he's yes. a child to us. In in comparison to <laughs> literally this, like, what, forty five? Like oh, forty sure. year old man. Mm-hmm. Like, come on. So, so there's no reason. So you're saying that he got into a physical altercation with Perry before going on, and he still went on for his. So literally, match. according to the people that are on the internet. They had, uh, I wouldn't say knockout, drag out, but they were sitting there fighting, just, you know, slapping each other, throwing punches. And then his music hit, he turned around, he walked out. And that's why he had that shit eating oh. grin the whole match, Shelby. Because then he ended up winning. Sorry to spoil the next Because match, he but... got away with it. So here's my thing, and I didn't know this. When I heard that Punk was coming to Collision, like that that was a thing... I just thought it was because there was nowhere else to put him. I did not realize he has say. Yeah, apparently. Which, that's the thing. So that's the thing. So if if Perry's pissed about that, I don't blame him. Because that's Mm -hmm. horseshit. Because originally this was just to put him somewhere. Yeah. So he didn't cause drama. Well. But now he's in charge of it? So. Question mark? I want to give the FTW match a a rating before I get into this. So I gave this. I gave it a three and a half. Yeah. Just because I. It was. It was, it was weird. And Hook won, and now he has the title again. Yeah. Which they shouldn't have taken him off and off of him in the first place. Yes. So I think they were just kind of writing that wrong. Honestly, true. But I think it's also setting up for probably another match at next week's pay per view, which is well, all out. Maybe we'll see. Yes, David. We have another AEW pay per view next su- or this coming up Sunday. It's all out. Yet another uh, pay-per-view I'm going to have to miss because Free Rain Theater presents a soldier's <laughs> hey, play coming up this plug. weekend in Rock Hill, South Carolina at the Tom S. Getty's courtroom. Yes, absolutely. If you don't have your tickets, go get them now. Honestly, last weekend to see it. So you got to get your tickets. And, and they are selling like hotcakes. They are. Um, but yes, that is next week as well. And I will be missing that one as well. But it's fine because yeah. other, our other team is going to be covering that one. That is correct. <laughs> that is correct. But I gave it a three and a half. I mean, it was fine. I said three. Whatever. So that's fair. Like it, and now with knowing that, which again, I figured when I saw that, because I, full disclosure, I did see yeah. who who it was with. I mean, at that point, you had to. I mean... But the the tiny little... Like, because this is the thing about this man. Like, he he just is so... I don't think... I guess this is a verb. I'm making it a verb. Instigatable. <laughs> like, he <laughs> Sure. Just, he yeah, just, I like, know what you mean. Something... Somebody breathes on this man. And he's like... <laughs> yeah. Because like, he tried that shit with, with um, Hangman. <sighs> Hangman's in the back literally eating lunch not given two flying fucks and he's, he's tried to do it with hangman for a while I know. and it's like dude he's just not taking the bait that's no because he's smart well and because it doesn't matter here's the thing with go, moving to the actual card yes with you have cm punk versus samojo for the quote-unquote real world heavyweight <laughs> title which it makes me laugh every time <laughs> i honestly i think it makes sense for for him Honestly, like, it, this is the most relatable storyline I think he has had in AEW so far because this is really what he feels. Yeah. Because basically the whole gist of it is he he never technically lost the title. He had to relinquish it because he got suspended because of the shit that happened at All Out last year. Yes. So he technically has never lost it. So now, on Collision, he has presented the quote-unquote real world heavyweight title um, 
a real world AEW, whatever the fuck the it's called. The championship. Right, the real, the real top prize or whatever. Um, and he's defending that now. And he has put a black X over it. In spray paint. In spray paint, because it's my symbol. Mm. Which I'm like, okay, fine. Yeah. Um, For someone who's straight edge, maybe you should have a drink. <laughs> maybe that would, like... like just, or or do something, you. like... like yeah, I Look, don't know. I, I appreciate all people who are straight edge. I'm just making a joke. But n- seriously, like, he he needs some form of... Something. Because the anchor is... That's a problem. Yeah, because this match with him and Samoa Joe, like, the history that they were playing up before this, like, it's, it's cool. Because it does go back, like, a very, very okay. long time. Okay. And with their time in Ring of Honor together and, you know, all this shit. But, like... Honestly, any CM Punk match that I watch now, I can't watch like I used to. Yeah. Because not just with the stuff that he's done in AEW, but the stuff that he has done in WWE on top of the stuff that he's done in AEW. Yes. It has compounded to where I just can't even watch a CM Punk related match without immediately thinking of all of that stuff. Yes. And that's unfortunate to me because yes. I think that the people who now have to work with him suffer because of, of that course. because we just we just watched the CM Punk match when we got here and it was fine yeah I like mean, it was it was fine like shout smart. out to Joe oh he carried it Joe lit- literally with that freaking disaster of a what was that thing Punk did that just, oh that Hurricane Rana that was absolutely deplorable that one and also Ugh. Him trying to get out of the muscle buster and oh, just, and just falling. <laughs> well, he busted a muscle. <laughs> well, <laughs> dear Lord. <laughs> he, he literally ragdolled. Yeah. It was terrible. <laughs> yeah. I just, I don't really have much to say about this one, I to mean, be honest with you. Yes. I mean, I, I wish that I can look at it. It's kind of like, okay, this is, I'm not saying that this is the same thing mm-hmm. exactly, but it's like watching a Roman Reigns match now. Like, it's that there's same so, icky feeling. There's so much backstage politics that go into who wins a match and why they win it and why they win it at this time versus this time and why someone would drop the belt here instead of here. There's so much public knowledge about that now. And Roman has held the title for so long. It's not enjoyable anymore it was it it kind of started to be enjoyable again with the whole bloodline stuff Mm -hmm. but now with the whole jimmy and jay thing it's made it yeah it's made the only thing that was saving it meh right because that's how it was with sammy and that's now how it was with the usos and now that both of those things are gone now roman has to stand on his own it's not enjoyable anymore yeah so relating it to cm punk yes you you have this guy who you know is brass and very outspoken in real life and it's bleeding into his character on screen. So the heat that he has from people outside as Phil, Mm -hmm. now they have it with CM Punk, who is supposed to be a different person if you're looking at how wrestling is supposed to work. And I, so this is exactly amazing segue because this is what I really wanted to talk about. As someone who did not watch Punk in WWE, who never had that experience, I can clearly see that he's, yeah, sure, he can do some moves. Yeah, he can, he can wrestle a few things. Like, he, he definitely could when he was in WWE. Like, I, I, I saw some like clips and things oh, like yeah, that. Oh, no, yeah, he, he was but great. This is the thing that I think is just pissing me off the most now. This is clearly proving that he cannot do anything unless it's just be him and Mm -hmm. here's the thing about wrestling yes you're gonna be a superstar you're gonna have a lot of fame you're gonna have this but you also have to remember that it's not really you if you're actually good (laughs) and i think this is the thing that pisses me off about punk the most is that clearly he cannot do anything unless it's just him being a bitch sitting and fighting Mm -hmm. and that's not enjoyable because I know that there's no element of, of character of, of just stretching boundaries of, of doing anything. He just, it's disappointing. 
It is, and I think that, unfortunately, he's always, just like everybody else, every bad person, right? Yeah. For making it a global thing, every bad person is always going to have a fan group, right? No matter what they do, no matter, you know, how bad things get, there's always going to be a core group of supporters for that person, regardless of what they do. And those people are the ones that buy his merch. They're the people that buy tickets. They're the people who put money down. And that's why he's still here. I, that's a hundred percent the reason why that Tony Khan has not fired his ass already. Because it's he because makes he money. draws people. Like they, they wouldn't have been able to sell out Wembley if all of that hadn't occurred. Which, like, I'm, I mean, I'm just that's that's my opinion. I'm not saying it's indisputable fact. Yeah, I'm just saying what my opinion is because that's what this show is. Yeah. But I definitely think that the fact that, like, the UK has, like, a huge presence in wrestling also helped. But, no, of course, that definitely had an influence well, on it. Well, him being on the card at all absolutely has had a, if you look at, statistically, if you look at the pay-per-view mm-hmm. sales and merch sales and all that stuff that goes into a pay-per-view sale, if you look at that since he has been on the roster, it has gone up tremendously. Mm-hmm. So... Tony Khan's not stupid when no. it comes to financial decisions. Just Obviously, a little, because just a little chicken. <laughs> he they're on year four now, and now they've sold out Wembley Stadium with what was it, eighty one thousand people. Oh, yeah, we gotta talk about that. They too. pulled a WWE, <laughs> and they and in the shit. middle of the pay per view was like, "Hey, remember that number that we told you? We actually Psych. went over that, and it's now eighty one thousand. Yeah, it was great because I called it like about t- <laughs> 10 minutes before it happened. But yeah, this but I, I do. I honestly, I, I think that I that's really fair. do. I can see that. I do want to just go ahead real quick and just say, Samoa Joe, you did fantastic. I'm going to go ahead and even say like I had you as a runner up for EST <laughs> because of your amazing, like how you threw Punk through that table and then flipped him the bird. It was amazing. Yeah, that that was a runner up EST. So Shout out to you, Samoa so, Joe, for literally, physically, and m- metaphorically carrying this match. So what would you give this? Because <sighs> we have to give it something. To someone else. <laughs> Can we give it to Joe? You give, give your score to Joe. Joe is honestly a four. Okay. Because truthfully, like... <laughs> I don't know if we should give... So let's... I'll let, do three. Let's say three. It averages three. out to three. Yes. Right? So three because... I mean, he no, does no wrong, technically. Um, he, he's great. He's fantastic. He carried that match physically, but I think it's also, I, I, get, I wanted to give him a four because I think, I think he really was pissed at him. No, I, I, think, think, I think he was well, a little obviously bit. I he think had he to have been in gorilla and have seen all of that. Oh yeah. Right. So like, yeah. you're going to potentially jeopardize and have my oh. match be pulled because your ass can't handle some yeah. like backstage politics. Yeah. And then I will go ahead and say, cause there's uh, speculation like somebody I think it was Hobbs don't quote me on this internet I'll go back and look at it but one person is denying it happened at all of course and I was like well they did the same thing with the elite fight exactly so now I'm like oh it did happen yeah no no (laughs) no one no one I'm sure no one believes that that didn't actually happen no but anyway we we can move on from from this match Um, wipe my hands of that so next we have the golden elite which is Kenny Omega, Hangman Adam Page, and Kota Obushi versus Bullet Club Gold, which is Jay White, Juice Robinson, and Takeshita, which I just want to quote uh, JR um, <laughs> right now. Yay. Why is there so much gold in this match? <laughs> I asked <laughs> An this. actual thing that he asked on commentary. That's right. And the I response, forgot that, and then I asked that today. The response that he got was, well, that's the name of the teams, JR. <laughs> They are so over him. It is so funny. Like it is just at this point. I can't help. He, he, there was there was a Freddie Mercury thing that was said during the pre-show because obviously it's Wembley. So like, and that's what they had. I, I they to made talk a reference too. Because I think um, there were a few people that had some um, Freddie inspired gear for that night. Jericho and, also did that, and we'll talk about that. And um, <laughs> I think it was Excalibur said something about <laughs> Freddie Mercury, and then. JR goes, well, I wonder if he's here. Oh, David. <laughs> and then J- 
Ex Excalibur goes, well, he's been dead for years now, JR, so I don't think so. <laughs> you I good, was, David? You I good? laughed so hard. I wish I could tell you when it was in the paper because I don't remember. I, but, but I it remember was that a moment. Genuine, You're right. He wasn't joking. No, he, wasn't. he was not joking. No, like, it was. Look, we love JR. JR has can, had a career of many, many fabulous years. Yeah. JR. It's okay to go home, it's, honey. It's time. It's, it's okay they have to go him. Home. They only have him for certain matches now. Because well, he during can't, he pay per views yeah. and then during Dynamite, he's barely on, and he's not on any of the other shows. He's, so it, they're they're gradually taking him off. Like I, I respect him for, oh, yeah. for his years and years of commentary of service, service. <laughs> and he has paved the way for a lot of other commentators. But oh, like sometimes you just got to know when to go. It's time. So wait. Back. Was Freddie Mercury there or not? It's <laughs> a good question, David. In spirit. You know, he probably was he there probably in was. spirit. He probably even did like a whole leg. Like, oh. He's like, what is here now? Like, <laughs> Because, bro, I, <laughs> we'll get to that Jericho tribute because, Lord, Freddie would have rolled his eyes. But I think, I mean, this match, I know the whole reason why it's the Golden Elite mm -hmm. is because of Ibushi and Kenny. So they used to be a tag team over in Japan. And they were called the Golden Lovers, oh. which okay. I don't. I, I bet it sounds really cool in Japanese. Oh yeah, but in in English, it's translated as the Golden Lovers. Yeah. Um. <laughs> so they were they were on a team with Hangman, so that's why they were the Golden Elite. So Understood. Like, and with Bullet Club Gold, I know Bullet Club was also a New Japan thing, and Jay White was the leader of Bullet Club Gold. Mm-hmm. And there's been a lot of different leaders of Bullet Club. Adam Cole being one, Kenny mm -hmm. Omega being one. Finn was in it for a while. Finn was the leader for a while. Yeah. Um, and but Jay White's iteration of it was, was the gold version of it. Yeah. Don't know why. I just it's it's the color they chose. Understood. Um, I'm sure there's another meaning to it, but I don't know. It probably was um, just so he could be like, well, we're gold too. <laughs> it's basically. This one was not the best elite match I've no, ever seen. Like I have definitely seen better matches with Kenny and Hangman involved. I I feel bad because like when I went back and I was like looking at my, you know, the list today to just prepare, mm -hmm. I I felt bad because I the only thing I remembered was how we talked about you know, he looks like the honeycombs guy. Oh, Juice Robinson. Yeah, if you, Do you remember that? If you look up a picture of him, I mean, if you don't know what he looks like, guys, look up a picture of Juice Robinson. That's his name. Yes. And I can't with that man. I a cannot. A comparison shot with him and the honeycombs mascot. It is uncanny. From, from the two thousands. You really do can't it, David. Do it. Tell a difference. Like it's insane. It's and that man is married to Tony Storm. Tony. Can we just talk about that for a second? Tony. Like he's Tony. she's married to Tony Storm. Tony. Which I'm not yucking anyone's. Yuck. David, is it not? Is it not a spinning <laughs> image of that man? <laughs> Guys, you can't see this right now, but David is. On the verge of tears right now. <laughs> you know, you said the honeycomb man, and I was like, oh, shit, I don't remember what the honeycomb man uh -huh, looks like. Uh -huh. Well, I saw Juice Robinson's picture before I saw the comparison, and I was like, oh, right, that's, and then I saw them side by side. Because, of course, I'm not the first person to have made this comparison. Oh, no. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yep. Wow. It is, you know, we'll have to post a picture on our Instagram oh, of them side by side. <laughs> that would be amazing. Because it is uncanny <laughs> how crazy it is. He's got them bug eyes and everything. Anyway, yes, anyway. I just, I think that, I thought oh. that Don Callis was going to be more of an influence in this match because he was ringside and he's having all that beef with Kenny. They didn't interact. No. Like at all. And, I mean, Takeshita is his guy right mm -hmm. now, which I'm going to be completely honest with you. I keep forgetting that he is with uh, Callus right now. Yes. Because, well, Osprey is also with Don Callis right now. So, that, cause that, so it's, but they haven't been on a team yet. It's fairly weird. They could have just, like, let him be with Osprey and it would have been fine. Yeah, I just don't think he needed to be out there nah. with, nah. with Takeshita because... There doesn't need to be any more heat on the match. Yeah. And that's the only reason why he would be out there. Takeshi he, had his own heat. He, he was just fine. He did. He and, was just fine. Which is why I don't think 
Callis was really needed and why he didn't do anything because I think the reason why he was out there was supposed to be to because he's a heat magnet right now. So yeah. like they needed more heat on that team because to me putting the Bullet Club gold with them just didn't really yeah. make much sense. They just needed two other people. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't know. This one didn't really do much for me. I don't remember a lot of spots from it. But all I, I know, I know is, they can work. But. All I know is that um, Takeshita rolled up Kenny, yeah. and it was a roll up. That's like something. it was out of all of the like things that a over six foot <laughs> Japanese man could do. Mm-hmm. He rolled him up, and there yeah. were certain moves. I know there was some where Kenny should not have done those moves on. Takeshita because there was, that man, that's right. it was the spiked hurricane Rana. Yes, because where, it was just like two inches or whatever. Like just, I mean, he hit, he hit him full neck yeah. on, the, on the mat. And I mean, he, it was barely enough. Mm-hmm. I was like, yeah, there's, there were some moves. I think they were too ambitious and it just didn't hit. And yep. everybody else just kind of fell to the wayside. Like even hangman you, fell I to the wayside. I mean, he did one buckshot lariat, and yeah. I was like, oh, yeah, he's in this match. I, I even was just going to say, I don't even remember, uh-huh. like, a move he did. Yeah, so, I mean, I gave it a three and a half. Like, it was fine. Again, yeah, three. I, the, the, you'll see a theme with that in my scoring, because there's a few matches that are just kind of like, eh. Mm-hmm. They were there, which I feel like happens on AEW pay-per-view sometimes. Like, some of these literally could have been done on a Dynamite or a Rampage, mm-hmm. and some of them have. Yeah. Like, I've seen this already for free, you know? Mm. So, I mean, that might be something that they fix later on down the road because yeah. they're still, like, a baby company. But, like, I don't know. I just feel like this one was one that could have... I feel like... They didn't need to have Kenny on the show, you know? Yeah. Like, I feel like sometimes they're just like, okay, we have to fit Kenny and the Young Bucks on the show somehow. Well, yeah, because So, was, we're going to put them in. I remember there was, like, a spot, like, where um, one of the, um, who's the other male um, commentator, like, with Renee? With Renee? Like, there's him. There's a backstage person, you yeah. mean? Yeah. I, I don't know the man's okay, name. I he's got glasses, his, though, yes. right? I yeah. can't remember his name. They're square. He's got, like, kind of, like, salt and, salt and pepper hair. Yes. But... He went up to Kenny one time, and it was, like, three weeks ago, maybe? Mm -hmm. And he was like, hey, so, like, what's your plans for, like... And he was like, I mean, I'm on the way to talk. Like, I'm not quite sure, you know? And uh, that's all I have to say about that. (laughs) And that's the last time we heard about Kenny doing anything. Yeah. And even then, it was... Which, ambiguous i think it's fine just don't have them on the yeah, card it's just fine like just have hangman and kenny just like they could still be there but yeah. they don't need to be on the card yeah because there were 10 matches total with the pre-show matches so yeah. you could have cut this one i feel I like think... this one definitely could have been <clears throat> cut because there was no stipulation to it at all it was just no. a regular six man you know tag match yeah so anyway um Next, we have the AEW Tag Team Championship match with FTR versus the Young Bucks, which, controversy aside, yes, one of the best matches of the they night, in my opinion. They can work I like think no one's business. I could see FTR Young Bucks forever, and I'd be fine. Absolutely. Like, I, and they even hinted at that. I hate that all the stuff with Cash Wheeler happened. I really do. I think it's really unfortunate timing, and he definitely shouldn't have done it. Yeah. I'm not... I am not advocating or, you know, no, condoning no, of any not. of his behavior at all. I think if you are in a road rage situation, the last thing you should do is flash a firearm at somebody. Like, seriously? Like, it's really stupid yeah. to, to do that, especially since you are on TV. Like, people know who you are. Yes. You know, people like, are going to call the police on you. Like, yeah. if, if you show a gun at them in a car. Mm. So, I, I think it's unfortunate that the timing of it all happened that way but i did have a good giggle at that uh, sign though oh my god that sign was funny as hell that is my sign of the night ladies and gentlemen um <laughs> they, i said, mean and that's saying something because yeah, england some, has some really good signage funny, oh you know what no 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 i'm gonna say that's the second one mm-hmm. because the best one and i forgot to mention it was during the punk um samoa joe match because it said rowdy is greater than larry <laughs> And I was yes. Like, Don't you do that to that dog. That dog didn't. You no, know? it was Piper. Piper. Oh, Piper was greater, was greater than, than Larry. Larry. <laughs> which 
the dog. If, he for can't those help who it, don't, man. for those who don't know, Larry is uh, CM Punk's dog that was allegedly, allegedly involved in the fight with the elite. <laughs> that was apparently kicked, allegedly kicked. Which I, I, I according think. to. According to reports from Kenny, he was actually trying to protect he the was. dog. He was. That's right. So, if anything, I think anybody yes. would have protected the dog over a human in that fight. But, but whatever. Yeah. Um, but yes. So the second best sign goes to fear the revolver. <laughs> Standing for FTR. FTR. <laughs> which good on him, man. Look, the British have a great sense of humor. I mean, I appreciate and he it. He was dead center right on hard camera side, Beautiful. so he knew what he was doing. And it was a good wait too cuz at first it was just like, you know, they were right there about to like start and then he just And he just pops it up. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure he saw it. Absolutely. Cuz there was a moment I think I, he like kind of turned his head kind of away and was just like, mm, clever. <laughs> Um, I gotta give mad respect, dog. <laughs> but I, I really think that these guys are great together. It was a they, really good match. I yes. mean, they kept kicking out of each other's finishers, which was fun. Sometimes with a Young Bucks match, that can get kind of old to me. But yeah. for some reason, when they're put with FTR, I don't care. No. Like, that's, cause yeah, because th- you do say that. That's right. They, they, they both do that. Yeah. See, the Young Bucks, when they're, they like to do those spots. They mm-hmm. like to do other people's finishers. Like as a mocking have, kind of thing. And have them kick out of them. Yeah. Right? Or have them try to kick out of them. FDR does the same thing. So when you put them in a match together, it makes sense. Yeah. But when they're put with other tag teams that don't do that, yeah. then it gets repetitive and it's hard to watch eventually. And it makes the match longer than it needs to be. But I don't, I don't think that this match suffered from yeah. that at all. I think it also works because they're, I mean, not... What's the word? Not vigilante. What's like, you know, not hero, not villain. Anti-hero? Anti-hero, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Like, they're not, you know, they're... Well, flip the coin. Like, they're bad guys, they're good guys. Like, right. whatever. Like, it doesn't matter. So, like, both of I, them I, just I, being... I think the... <laughs> I think the technical wrestling term for that is uh, tweeners. Tweeners. Like, in-betweens. That makes sense. Makes so, sense. like, you... One minute you can be heel, one next you can yeah. be face. Like it doesn't necessarily matter for your character because exactly. you can identify with and get over with both. And that's what happened at the end. Yeah. Because, well, we'll talk about the well, F- more moves at first. Well, FTR, well, they had a lot of callbacks to their previous matches because this did. is like the third in the series because yeah. it's been a long time coming apparently mm-hmm. with this one because this was the th- only the third match that they've ever had in this company together or against each other because for like the title oh okay because um they started it in 2020 and then as time went on dang you're right stuff just kept happening and yeah either wires were getting weren't getting crossed or things were getting shut down and they weren't able to do it like or drama right exactly or you know suspensions (laughs) um (laughs) So now they finally get to do the final series of yeah. this, or complete the series. Um, finish the story. Oh, God, they actually get to finish <laughs> their story. They did finish the story. Um, but FTR retains with the Shatter Machine, which I love that move. That is a really so sick much. move. And actually getting to see the Young Bucks do that move was actually really cool. Because yeah. you don't get to see anyone else outside of FTR do that move. Like, yeah. it's not a very common tag team finishing maneuver. Um I mean, I gave this a four. Yeah. I, I really enjoyed this. Um, there were, I mean, I don't know. I could have gone more, but I just, I, I feel like four was calling to me. Yeah, oh, it was speaking to <laughs> it you. It was speaking to me. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I, I liked this. And This I, was a fun, There fun was match. no mention of the legal stuff going no. on, which I appreciated. Because um, when you have, this company is just plagued with so much legal troubles and backstage issues and fights and suspensions like it's nice to just kind of forget about it even if it is happening yeah it's in his personal life like it doesn't need to bleed into what's going on and the young bucks didn't make any reference to it during their match or no or anything like that like they did with you know with all the punk references that they've done which (laughs) which is interesting because ftr are punk guys yeah so it's interesting that they we could even argue that they kind of were forced to be i don't know i i'm i i would 
speculate it's a choice. Yeah, you think yeah, so? Yeah, I okay. think so. Just from stuff that I've heard, just speculation okay. I've heard backstage. But um, CMFTR just sounds stupid. I'm it, sorry, it boys. Is. I'm it's sorry. A very stupid it's team stupid. name. <laughs> See, it doesn't even roll off the tongue. Like it's dumb. <laughs> but I'm I'm glad that they were able to not harp on that, and they could just do a really good match. And they showed up now with you know that spot that they had at the end with the young bucks refusing to shake their hands yeah i think there may be more well they even hinted at excalibur did on commentary he's like oh well it seems that this sure isn't over mm-hmm. or something it, in that vein yeah because you know? i'm and i'm kind of glad just because oh, yeah. everybody has waited a very long time for this match mm-hmm. and if this is the only one that we're gonna get that would mm. that would kind of suck yeah um but but yeah no i think it was i think it was good i gave it a four solid four regals um Moving on to the stadium stampede match Y'all. with the best friends, Eddie Kingston and Penta versus Blackpool Combat Club, Santana and Ortiz. I, I, this, okay. If <laughs> I'm cracking open another one for this one. You should. I'm going to go ahead and give a little metaphor here. Okay. If someone doesn't, ha- like to all of the listeners, if you do not have ADHD, <laughs> this is an example of ADHD in a person's brain. There are so many things happening at once and your br- it's like a ping pong ball is just going off in your brain constantly. And it's fun, but it's also a, a little lot. disorienting. <laughs> it's a little crazy. Um, <laughs> but this match, holy cow. I don't think, it's been a while that you and I like, like you, you couldn't, but I stood up enough for you during this match because you were <laughs> I, holding Lottie. I had a baby on my stomach. But, yes, but Lord, Lord have mercy. Well, well, Shelby Patterson. I was trying my hardest. Well, I was just gonna say this is a good segue. What are you drinking? I'm drinking it truly. Heck yeah! What flavor we got, David? Oh, nice and crisp. What flavor we got, David? Uh, pineapple. <laughs> Mine is passion fruit. Oh, okay. I didn't know we were getting sensual up in here. Okay. Taco cat. <laughs> you don't know what we're talking about. There's a certain short film that may be coming out in a bit that you should watch. You should definitely watch it. Um, that's we're, all we can say about that. Yep. Our our uh, voice ability is used. Um, our voice ability. I don't know. <laughs> our voice talents. Anyway, so this I agree with you. Like this match <laughs> was all over the place in the best possible way it's and you know how crack. i love this type of match oh yeah the matches that there's so many freaking cutaways <laughs> to something else yeah i don't know why my brain just loves it yeah like i just there there were so many there was a certain point where they had a double split screen <laughs> going on because yeah. there was Something going on in the concourse area, yeah, and then they something were... going on ringside. Like there was so much going on. It was amazing. And then they just got to the point where they're like, "Well, this is useless because there's more than just two things going on at once. So we're just gonna cut randomly to different things going on." Yeah. And Excalibur was doing an amazing job of trying he... to keep up with everything. He's a king, honestly. He's he's the best. Like... I, I swear <sighs> they pay that man over time when he has to go through the card on on dynamite absolutely like talking about what's coming up next <laughs> I, he doesn't take a breath no. i swear no so i this. just just running down just a little bit because obviously we love this match and if you can find this 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 one is the one to watch this is that minus the main i feel like <sighs> was the best match of the night because there was so much to look at. You had so many spots that everybody got a chance to do something. To really shine. Trent Beretta. You, I swear. Look, he's your Johnny Gargano. I, I have a soft spot for that man. You sure do. Because for the past, like with this feud with the BCC, he has taken the majority of the heavy bumps. Like serious, I serious mean, hits. One right after the other, like they had on Rampage, they had a parking lot brawl. That another another, another one match. you should go watch. Yes, go watch that now. <laughs> well, listen Trent, to us and then go watch. Trent it. died and had to be revived he, he to be did. able to come and do this match he did. because 
I mean, like it was Sue, Sue cool. grabbed his soul from like <laughs> leaving this earth and brought it back and shoved it into his body. Which she made an appearance during this match and I, brought a tray of cookies to use as a weapon. Look at those which, little biscuits, those tea and crumpet biscuits. Like there were actual like American style cookies. Yeah. And then they had, and then like, you had pastries. Yeah. And then something that would be served at like a high tea. It's like exactly it was like a, what it was. It was such a convoluted like because you had like tea and scones and then chocolate chip cookies like it yeah. was it was so <laughs> america and britain it was so weird <laughs> but hey she she contributed and that's how Look, she contributed as soon as i saw that car i was like Sow! well and i mean mox gave her like the bloodiest kiss on the cheek that, imaginable which that, of course the that. man opened up like five minutes into the into the match oh but. yeah Let, let's discuss how that man opened up Oh, no, he had opened up before that spot had oh, happened. Oh, no, I know. That just is the start of it. But I, I honestly believe that that was just, like, the same spot. So whenever they bring out, <laughs> like, a like a black bag, <laughs> you that's never a, a nondescript good, black bag. It's never a good sign. There's always a drawstring to it, so yep. you can never fully see or tell what's mm-hmm. in it. And It's velvet. You, usually it's, like, thumbtacks. Mm-hmm. or glass or mm-hmm. you know shards of whatever um this time he pulled out something and i legitimately thought it was a bundle of pasta you did and i said is that pasta Look, why he could why make anything a weapon no doubt pasta there pasta <laughs> as a what I, I literally started <laughs> trying to rationalize this choice in my really head funny. <laughs> at 7 30 this morning katie recapped to me what happened during this match <laughs> I was half awake and going, what in the cinnamon toast fuck are you talking about? It's a really good question, David, because friends, it was not pasta. No. It was wooden skewers. That this like man, you put like you put barbecue yeah on that you put like pieces of yeah meat like on. kebabs yeah and <sighs> he pulls it out and when we realize that that's what it is, I my mind immediately goes to tiny tiny splinters. And I didn't even think about right? that until because you said that out when, loud. When that breaks, oh. it immediately just disintegrates, right? Because yeah. it's not a lot of wood that's holding it together. Oh. So It's like 99 cents to make. Like, he goes to oh. use it on Penta. Penta reverses it and jams the entire bundle in the top of his head. He's pretty sure where he had opened up. So here's the thing about that one, because that was like... The, the initial stab was uh-huh. one thing, uh-huh. but homeboy reared back his arm and slammed yeah. his hand on top of the skewers, pushing them in deeper. So he basically is like walking around, selling it tremendously. Because I act, but he didn't have to. <laughs> acting like he had no control of his nervous system anymore and was just kind of stumbling around like Frankenstein's monster. I will say I did giggle really hard, though, because when... When Penta let go, oh my god, it all just went they everywhere. They splayed as if it was like, um, like that, like TikTok filter that everyone does, where it's like the the bodies moving all over the place and the hairs like flopping. Oh, it yeah. looked like that, and I was like, oh no! It literally just looked like it was just circling around yes. his head because he was moving his head, and it made it move even more. Which, but they didn't immediately all fall out. No, I think he had to pull the majority of Ooh. them out. Like, because some of them fell out of his head, but the majority of them stayed. So the, the, that that spot, I think, the I, dry was, heaving that came out of holding, my mouth was holding Lottie, and I had just like she had fallen asleep not too long before that. And the noise that I made, I immediately just like went to her. I was like, shh, 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 shh. like because I, it was, I knew I was gonna wake her oh up. Oh my gosh! But it, nope, she didn't. She just kind of laid there. But are it we gonna? Was, it was so visceral and i think that was the that is probably the worst one of his that i've ever seen truthfully I, like, we've seen some pretty messed up shit from him absolutely and then i literally i said out loud after penta smashed it into his head and he mm. did the whole you know walking around bed i said renee come and get your man get your come man. get him out of this <laughs> room drag he his is, ass out he is <laughs> beyond help at this point he's done like he needs to be escorted out of the building put a fork in him oh wait they did they did a few times <laughs> and he into other people because they're all obsessed with forks right now yeah the fork everybody's thing, guys. stabbing each other in the like, face with forks like, like like i get it i get it 
I think it's also like you can like it's a way you can like easily manipulate something like mm-hmm. to make it look like as even if you like you know, but no, I, I'm pretty sure there was oh, no, a no, no, lot no. still it, stuck in his head. I, yes. Oh no! In this this match, they were not holding back. But a normal match where they're pretending to use a, a fork, but th- oh, but they're sure. not they're not pretending in this one. But I want to go ahead and just also note. I have talked about this in a joking capacity for a very, 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 very long time about how it would be hilarious if one day some sick, sadistic person in one of these huge brawls would just throw a tub of Legos on the side because I (laughs) thought that would be nasty because y'all know there is nothing more painful on this earth than when it's in the dark and you're trying to go to the bathroom Mm -hmm. and you're, you know, like as a kid and you step on a Lego before you get to the bathroom Oh my gosh, there's nothing more painful. And sure enough, I flipped when, because it was one of those real quick turns. Uh So we didn't even get to see. I don't even know who threw it. I don't know. I don't even know who threw it. I don't know who landed on it because I was flipping out so bad. But Legos appeared on the ground. They threw a ton of Legos. (laughs) It was awesome. Again, we have people in high places listening to this show. And is that not immediately what I said? I said, someone's listening to me. (laughs) And it was, it was real quick. Like you said, like it was just, it It was, was, oh yeah, by the way, oh yeah, by the way, someone put some Legos out and (laughs) someone stepped on it and then they cut back to something else. They were, they were body checked onto it. Uh Uh-huh. It was terrible. Mm -hmm. Like that's the worst. So you had that, you had, um, Orange Cassidy. Oh my gosh. Took out a, a glass beer bottle and literally does the whole like the duck. No, he does this first, Mm -hmm. hits it on the side of a trash Mm -hmm. can, Mm -hmm. and has it all, like, you know, jagged and everything, and going to use it. I think it gets knocked out of his hand, and it shatters on the ground, Mm -hmm. and it gets used as, um, oh, sorry, he breaks it off into the bag. Yeah, so he breaks it off into the pail. He had it on the pail, and then he had the duct tape, so he wrapped the duct tape around his hand. Well, first it was used as, like, the glass shards were actually used as spots before yes. he did this but then yeah so he what he does is his his finisher is the orange punch yeah and um he takes duct tape that again just appears all of this shit just appears it's magically just i don't know obviously it's preset yeah. you know because you, you check your props beforehand so that was there <laughs> but any good wrestler or actor or actor knows <laughs> you check your props before the curtain <laughs> so he takes the duct tape and wraps his fist in it sticks his fist into the pail with the glass around it just like and pulls out and it's literally his whole fist is covered in glass shards it is just and so you're like shit like when who is he going to use it on when is he going to use it because this was like they were still about five ten minutes left oh yeah and so he just literally is holding this because if you know Orange Cassidy as a character, like, he's normally very lackadaisical. Like, oh, yeah. very, like, sloth style is what yeah, they call it. it's fantastic. And, and he had a few of those moves. He kicked um, he Mox did, in the shin with that. But for, I, yes, which. Was, he's the, already gone through enough. This was after the wooden <laughs> skewer spot. And I literally yelled. With, Orange, with, like, still wood sticking out of his head, Cassidy comes up and does the, you know, the lackadaisical oh. shin kicks. Not, and oh. I yell out, he's already been through so much. <laughs> Not again. He can't handle it. So he did do those. But then he he's literally just walking and waiting. Like you see him just kind of pacing around, yeah. just being like, who can I use this on? And he ends up using it on Claudio. Oh, my gosh. And, and we didn't even get to talk about that because Claudio and Eddie Kingston. Oh, from the gut. Girl. Eddie Kingston rushed past everybody when the match like officially started when they came out. And Pushes just, his own teammate his out own of the way. Te- move. He kicked. He kicked everybody out of the way and just starts wailing on Claudio. And they literally went around. They were in the concourse. They were getting like you know in the snack area. Like they were everywhere. That's my, they okay. were all over the that's place. That's one of my favorite places that I people love. go when it's like a Falls Count anywhere. Why do you go to the concession stand? <laughs> like they, For that ketchup spot. They literally are throwing ketchup and mustard at each other. There's popcorn everywhere. There's cotton candy sticking out of their hair. Like, oh. it's just, it's so funny to me it's that every best. wrestler wants to go to the 
concourse and get food pelted on them. Are you telling me you have never wanted to slap another person with a hot dog? I'm never saying I didn't. I didn't say that I never wanted to do that. You know what? But I'm gonna. I just think it's bucket list. It's it's hilarious to me (laughs) because it happens every single falls count anywhere match. Yeah, like every single time or like any match that has the stipulation like you can go anywhere oh, in yeah. the arena but yeah they were wailing on each other which and like then... that was also kind of like an afterthought because oh, there yeah. was so much going on oh, so yeah. you kind of forgot about claudia for a second and then he comes in and actually takes the pin it was which unreal. was really funny to me because i think we made the joke of like okay if whoever's gonna win this please don't make you to take the pin we so- yep like yep, yep out of all of the people he <laughs> He's taken so much, so many pins. He's for taken this almost team. all of them. Almost, honestly. almost every single one <laughs> for Blackpool, and I just anyone but him. Which, oh. but I thought it was really interesting when you had Santana and Ortiz, which we haven't, has, we didn't even discuss them. Who has honestly. just come back? I think it was actually one of them who did the logo spot. That would make sense. Pretty sure. Oh yeah, Nick. Nick, is his first name now? They're going. They're adding Mike. Mike. <laughs> Mike. Mike. The most white guy name ever like, is given to Mike Santana. Yeah, because <laughs> like, they're not saying Santana anymore. They're saying Mike Santana. And the first time I heard it, I was I'm, like, wait, what? I'm sorry, Santana, if that is your actual first name. Like, I'm not making fun of your name. I'm just saying, like, he's a, a very nice looking Hispanic man. And yeah. you're going to give him the name Mike. Yeah. <laughs> like, like if that's just, a legal thing, like, that's fine. Like, you know, like, we understand totally. But, but if AW is giving you this name, you need to change it immediately. I think it also was just in the middle of this absolute, like, honestly, shit show. Just to hear Mike Santana and just be like, wait, what? No. <laughs> what? It's not a badass name. Okay. Also, we didn't talk about Penta, so Penta. Oh, in yeah. This, I flipped, y'all. I flipped. Because Penta, he, he was there. He was doing a really good like amount of fighting, and he was doing awesome. But all of a sudden, he's gone for a bit, and then he comes back, and it's Penta Oscuro. So, y'all, do, do some research. I don't want to like just delve on it for forever, but Penta Oscuro does some dark stuff. So if you want to go back and look at that history, um, Lucha Underground, he does all sorts of other stuff. But... I was ready for fluorescence. I thought fluorescence were going to come in. When he came out, I was freaking out. But they didn't really do they much. Didn't. They didn't. And I kind of was frustrated. They had one ladder spot, which that was his ladder on his side actually broke. It did, yeah. Um, that was so rough. I don't think they were able to actually do the spot that was intended. But that was really it. I know. So I kind of hate that if that was the case, because I'm not familiar with this side of Penta. Yeah. But if that was the case, I really hate that they kind of wasted it a little bit. I know. Bit. It kind of felt like a Finn moment. And mm-hmm. I hate that. Mm-hmm. I hope that that's rectified. And I hope that that's fixed for the future because it's really cool. Like, it really is cool. Like, it's like well, another like another person. Maybe they shouldn't have brought it out in such a chaotic match. Because yes. he might have done other stuff, but we just didn't see it. Yeah. Because the camera didn't catch it. Yeah, because he had to go change. He changed his whole outfit. And he had a whole different entrance, too. Yes. Because they played different music when he came out. Like, but I'm I, hoping they're just dropping that so it's going to continue. Yeah. Maybe that's like a little a little teaser yes. of like something else that he I'm can do. I'm holding hope. Yeah. You better listen, Tony. Don't mess that one up. <laughs> okay, thanks. Love okay, you. thanks. Bye. Bye. Um... But yeah, so Orange Cassidy hits Claudio with the what the glassy orange punch, or is that Ooh. what we're gonna call it? Like, I'm just I'm just making that up. <laughs> the mimo- my head. we can't say mimosa because he did that already. Well, they already did a mimosa. I know. Match. I'm trying to like come up with like a funny um, like sparkly. <laughs> the sparkly. The blood orange. <gasps> oh, David. Oh, that's beautiful. Yes. Is if, if if they call it something else, then we are writing a letter. We're saying, dear Tony Khan, it has to be called this. It is now the blood orange. Oh the blood my orange punch. Oh my god, delicious. That sounds fake. I love it. <laughs> delicious. So he hits him with the blood orange punch. Nasty. Gnarly. And Claudio takes the pin and the best friends team win. Van Which Fantastic I match. So in our in our wrestle league. Yes. That we're doing. Which is fun. Um, which is a shout out um, Wrestle Talk for creating such a really fun uh, fantasy football esque wrestling league. Like, yes. It's really fun. Um, I apparently picked them to win and didn't remember. 
You did? Yeah. You even said you were like, I picked, I picked Blackpool Combat Club. I didn't remember. Because <laughs> the way that it's set up, you can't go and look at real time after you've submitted it. So oh. you kind of, we're going to just have to write whatever we do down because. Definitely like a screenshot or something. Yeah. 10 matches. I'm not going to remember who I picked. No. You know? But I'm excited to do it next time because I didn't get to this time, but I'm I'm ready for next week. Well, this this one made it crazy to predict because you're like, who who knows? Right. Oh, but I gave this a four and a half. Honestly, like, I just I want to go back and watch it again just so I can see. It's like a really good movie. Like you want to go back and you want to watch it again so you can see different storylines yes. and different plot points that you might have missed. Yes. or Different dialogue or whatever. That's how I feel about this one. Like, I just really want to go back and, like, see... Because I know there's stuff that I missed. I wanted to give this a five. And I was really tempted to do it. Mm-hmm. Comparatively, comparatively, on the card, though, there's another match that's a five. Mm. And so I couldn't... I couldn't... So, but it's like a 4.75. Yes, I'm getting as <laughs> close as I can, like, to that five. I'm surprised you're not doing, like, 4.95 or something. I was being nice to you. <laughs> I was being polite. I mean, the fact but, that you're going into double digit decimals, you're not being nice to me. <laughs> but but I am going to say this. This beat the Cracker Barrel match for me. That has literally been like you my said that penultimate. Like, this, like the Cracker Barrel match was like the epitome mm. of the best match for AEW. And I think that it just got beat. I think this beat it. Which... This was definitely the best stadium stampede match that oh, they've ever had. Bar none. Because um, this match was created during the pandemic um, when yes. they couldn't have fans and they needed an area where there could be a lot of people in the match but still have a lot of social distancing yes. opportunities. Um, and, and now it has evolved into doing it at Wembley Stadium. Which is? Which is insane. Um, the- but yeah, top notch well done match amazing match so then we move on to a match that i have very interesting opinions on (sighs) um so this is the women's championship match it was a four-way match between hikaru shida saraya tony storm and Britt baker tony now before we before Mm -hmm. we talk about what i want to talk about Mm -hmm. we just need to acknowledge the tony storm of it all tony she is who Gina would be oh my God. if she was a wrestler. Tony like, Storm came out like literally like Norma Desmond from Sunset Boulevard. She is a 1920s silent film star that's losing her damn mind. Comes out in a full like she's, I not, don't, she's not relevant because of the talkies. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready for my close up. Close up. <laughs> close up. <laughs> No, shout out Mythical Kitchen. Um, Seriously, but that is exactly like, what she is. Like literally, the actual jumbotron had. Uh-huh. Oh, excuse you. A jumbotron. Don't even acknowledge him. <laughs> like it had the 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 reel of like the the film going through, and it was like the crackling effect, and it was just like and she had been hinting at it for a while. But I was like, yeah. please, 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 please. She and came y'all, out with the robe, the, the, and with the, the feathers on the slippers, oh, and yeah, it was and great. the rolled hair and the red. Whatever merch you have, I'm buying it. I'm buying that, and I'm buying that kangaroo kick shirt. It's happening. <laughs> Payday's coming up. So, it's happening. So now that Lacey Evans is no more, now I, you can have Tony Storm. Yes. So there and, you go. You know that. Oh, like I'm not saying because I love I love our picture. Like I don't want to change it. But if we ever had like a you know like a, a revamp a, a of revamp, it, a yeah. revamp like that, Tony Storm would be my would be my lady. Well. So with this match, yes, I, I do not like the booking of this. You were very I upset really with this I really don't one. like this. So basically, just to rush through this because we've got a couple more to get through. Yeah. Um, I felt like this match was to further the outcast group, mm-hmm. to further their storyline at Sheeta's expense because Soraya won this match. And I think that is a dumb choice. I, I really do. And here, here's why. Here's why I think that. I, I is not necessarily against Soraya. One, she really hasn't had that much, had that many matches since she has Mm-mm. returned. She had that pay-per-view match with Britt and has not really done much 
outside of maybe a tag match here and there, but she's really just been on the sideline side person um, manager with um, with Tony and Ruby. Yeah. Right. Which I've been fine with. Yeah. Right. Because she was a good manager for the Kabuki Warriors, which was Kyrie Sane and Asuka. Yep. Like she was really good at that. Oh, man. And what a throwback. I was just like, OK, like if that's the if that's what they're going with. And she had her match back with Britt. And if, any, if you're going to do it with anybody for your first match, like it, Britt would be Britt. A, a good person. Yeah. But I feel like she didn't need to win this match for the outcome to happen. Because what happened was she pinned Tony to win this match, right? And, and she was one who turned on Tony. Yes, she first. Com- completely turned on Tony and ended up pinning her for the win. Didn't even pin Sheeta for the win. Yeah. So she did win in as champion, which mind you, she had just won off of Tony. Yeah. Maybe two, three weeks ago. Yes. And they came up with this, you know, this four-way match, which I don't think anyone thought that Britt was going to win. Britt has gone on record saying that she I, doesn't want to win any more titles right I'm now. And I'm going to talk about that, too, because... And mm-mm. I... One, it was really short, which mm-hmm. I think they got cut for time. Yes, Because absolutely. of the stadium stampede match. Yes. Because they were right after it. Yes. Um, and Sheeta could have still retained and the outcast still could have had that same conflict Mm -hmm. without her losing the title because Sheeta has not held it long enough to establish that title to be something relevant because they are struggling to keep that division relevant. And the more times that you change hands of a title, the less value it has. Like look at the tag titles for the women in WWE. No one even cares to know who has them, and nobody knows who has them right now because they drop it so often that nobody cares. So with the women's division, the way that they're booking it right now, they're making us not really care because when you have a long, like a person who holds it for a long time, it creates longevity, it creates exclusivity, like it creates want because that person has held it for so long. That's why, like, again, to bring up Roman, that's why we want him to drop it so bad because yeah. he's held it for too long. But with this, we have the opposite problem. They're dropping it too often that now, like, this is just the popcorn match every single time. Yeah. Because no one cares. So many people got up and left right before this match started. Mm-hmm. Like, I, like, I, I saw it. That's how it happens with every single women's match that they have. I mean, on Dynamite, they call it the, I think it's, I mean, the second hour obligatory women's match right yeah. because it's always the second like right at nine o'clock <sighs> and it's for about 10 15 minutes it lasts for one commercial break and then they're done and it's the same storyline every single time so i feel like to make us care about the outcast more you could have just kept it on Sheeta, have soraya try to do that and fail mm-hmm and then have the story continue with their descent until the next time there's a championship match. And then you can build off of that. But now where do we go with Soraya now have winning the title pretty decisively? So here's what I thought, because I, I was thinking about this because we did talk about this when it happened. Mm-hmm. And I think I understand with where they imagined it to be. Sheeta could go ahead and say, well, you didn't pin me. So therefore, I don't think it counts. Kind of bullshit, you know? Mm-hmm. So therefore, that could have started that. But at the same time, then now they've opened up the can of worms with, with Tony. With Tony. Mm-hmm. And Ruby. Because and Ruby came out too and did that whole shenanigan thing. Um, and then walked out on them. Yes. And so clearly, like, even with that, that could have been that too. But... Here's the thing I'm going to say, because I'm more so disappointed about this, not because of that loss. Like, yeah, I, I kind of like just was like, it's it's she's in England. Like they, they had to give it to we, her. We, like we should have known when her, when her entire family, family walked out yep. with her. Yeah. Like we should have known that she yep. was going to take it. Yeah. And she came out to We Will Rock You by Queen. Yeah. 
You Which, know, Tony, what's your budget for music? We'll talk about that later. There, there were a bunch of like Seriously. entrance music changes that were just like, I mean, I'm sure you're only using this once, yeah. but still. That's a ton of money. So much money. But I want to go ahead and say, here's the thing that pissed me off about this match. And it wasn't just that. If Britt has gone on saying she does not want to do this and does not want the title, then why the hell do you not give it to someone who does? Why does it have to be Brit in this match? When mm. there are so many other opportunities for these women who you say you want to support, and then you keep picking the same four people. Yeah. Like, why? Well, I mean, I know, like, I know that Brit is, like, the powerhouse of the division. But she doesn't need it. Oh, I know that. Like, she could walk out and, like, go and take a two-week break, come back, she'd be just fine. Yeah, people know who she is. She's fine. I know, but people know, people know who she is. And yeah. She's in the established one. And even if she doesn't win, she still is a good placeholder in their eyes. Like and that's that's, that's kind of how I see it. Now I agree with you a hundred percent because there's a bunch of women in that division that are just sitting there. I think Willow would have been great in this. I mm. think um, I think Sky Blue needs some more time. But like later yeah. down the road, like I feel like she could have fit into something like this too. Willow but definitely could have been a good have, fit because yes. she, she's kind of been feuding with the outcast a little exactly. bit too so that could have yeah you're right like i feel worked. like there's so many other options like also athena i miss you i miss you she's killing it over in our i know you right are now. i know you she's are she's holding down that women's division over there so she needs you're a boss she needs to stay there yeah but i feel like it would have been fun to see you on this card oh sure but that's just me being me being selfish <laughs> but i but i agree i feel like it was lackluster but i didn't feel it was lackluster because of that because i feel like they're going to be able to figure that out i feel like crap for sheeta because that is true but i think they're trying to give her something to work for because she does just kind of come out and she's like i'm sheeta which is cool but there's no motivation for her to do anything I'm glad that you have hope that they're going to do right by this women's division. Because I, I really don't have hope. I'm hoping. <laughs> I'm not saying I'll be right, but I'm hoping. And I'm just, I'm I'm interested. I'm usually pretty optimistic when it comes to booking stuff. Yeah, but you haven't been with the women's they year. Have, they've not given me a reason to be hopeful from the beginning. Yeah. I mean, they've never booked this women's division correctly. And I think it really shows with that, um, with that sign that popped up a few weeks oh ago. Lord. It was after the um, was Britt Baker, savage. Taya Valkyrie match, where I'm just saying that was a choice by wait. production. Oh, Taya Valkyrie, sorry. Yeah. I went Valkyria and I was like, wait, what? No. <laughs> sorry, sorry y'all, um, NXT brain. So that was a choice by production, by the way, uh -huh. because- Or at least the, by- The finisher of that match. And then immediately they cut to a sign that says, book the women's division better. So, at least cameraman's I'm, on our side. I gave this a three. I I just, I really felt like it got the short end of the stick. And I mean, if any match is going to get cut, it's going to be the women's, unfortunately. Yeah. But I, I really feel like that they could have done something better with this. They could have. There was a lot they, of opportunity. There was a lot more story that could have been told in that short amount of time than what they actually gave it. Absolutely. So, um. Next, we have the coffin match with oh. Sting and Darby Allen versus Swerve Strickland and Christian Cage. Now, look here, some momentum. Momentum. Wow, bless. I'm so tired, y'all. So you haven't sorry. even been drinking. I am sober, y'all. I'm just tired. <laughs> um, but no. That's a different kind of drunk. Yeah. <laughs> tired. Oh, I remember those days in college. Um, but no, like, this was another thing where, like, the momentum just shot right back up. I Yeah, I... I just wish I cared a little bit more about it because I love Swerve though. One, we've seen a coffin match before. Yeah, um, I have no problem two, with that. Two, the build up for this was hella confusing because that, yeah, all of a sudden we had we had this build up to where Darby and Nick Wayne and Sting were feuding with um, Swerve. Swerve and A R Fox, right? Mm -hmm. And A R Fox legit was wearing a blood stained tank top that was. Like Nick soaked, Wayne's blood soaked in his blood, and, and they had for like like two three weeks. They had Nick Wayne's mom ringside one time. Like and she slaps were. It was and, a whole deal. Oh yeah. And then all of a sudden, on that very episode that the mom was there, the embassy turned on Ar Fox and kicked him out 
And then Darby and Nick and Wayne were like, oh, you got kicked out of your group? Come over here. Even though you, like, bled my dude to death. Yeah. It's okay now because you ripped up the it's, tank top. It's, and it's okay. It's haphazard, but it, it un, and unfortunately is just because of Visa. And Which that doesn't sucks. make any it sense doesn't. to me because A.R. Fox is from Connecticut. Like, why could he not <laughs> I have don't, made it? I don't understand. They're, they're not telling us everything on that, which, what, fine, whatever. Everybody had freaking visa issues with this. Ray Fenix had issues. That's why he wasn't in this, you know, the stampede match. Which, like, honestly, I, I love you, Ray, but you weren't missed. Like, there was he, so yeah, much going on. There was, that yeah. The, the extra person was not needed. Yeah. Um, but, but so, AR, AR Fox was kicked out, yeah. and Christian Cage was brought in as Swerve's new partner. Which also, which I, not even the champion, not I even the I kind of get because Darby and him have kind of been going back and forth with this whole TNT they've, thing. They've had a thing for that for a while. But it's very loosely put together. It's, it's it, just a scramble. It felt like it was weeks of story buildup that got smushed into one night because of these issues with AR Fox. Yes. And from what I've heard, he's got some heat backstage now because of these you know visa issues because um, he waited until the very last minute to tell them that he had issues oh, dude. and so which is why everything felt so compacted dude. because he literally told them right before listen kids you just know, go ahead and tell the truth in the beginning and it'll always make things a lot easier you know it may suck in the beginning but yeah. you know it, just rip off the band-aid yeah exactly rip off the band-aid but so anyway christian was put in this match mm-hmm. and I was kind of like, cause I'm just not feeling his whole, like, I'm the real TNT champion, even I'm, though Luchasaurus won it. Like, I just, I'm not feeling that story. It's I'm, weird to me. And I'm just, it's, it, I'm not feeling it. I'm looking forward to when Luchasaurus rips him into like four parts and it's going to be great. Yeah, but he hasn't even really he doesn't even hinted like, at that I yet. Know, there's no glances at the title. There's no like looking at him like all menacingly. Like there's, yeah. there's no, there's no indication that that's ever going to happen. And it's kind of sad. And, and maybe it will. Maybe they'll start doing that after this. I don't know. Yeah. But I think because the buildup was so wonky, it made me not really care. Because also, in what world is Dar- are Darby and Sting not winning a cow from that? I mean, Like, yeah. what, what world <laughs> would, would that happen Hell in? would literally freeze some, over. Some type of alternative universe yeah. where... Everything is upside down. Yeah. Honestly. But so you kinda knew who was gonna win this mm-hmm. from the beginning. They had the you know, the spray painted coffin with Christian and Swerve's logos on it, which was kind of cool. Also I loved your comment during that because you're like, Do you know how expensive a coffin is? Because they and are they, and, and they just spray painted all inside of that and all over it. Hey, like, it's so I'm, expensive. Hey. I'm not dissing you. There I agree are, with you. There are tons of people who are listening right now who are agreeing with me. I'm not disagreeing. I just also think that it's hilarious <laughs> that your logical brain came out in that moment. Yeah. And it was hilarious. Because <laughs> they literally <laughs> took black spray paint <laughs> and <laughs> spray painted inside and outside of a very nice coffin. It was a very nice coffin. Which I'm sure cost thousands of dollars. Oh, gosh. You know, unless somebody built it, which would still cost a lot to make. Still. But, I mean, it was kind of predictable. It was fun to watch just because you have like Darby just having no regard for nope. his body ever and and Swerve always executes well oh yeah and Swerve was great too and there were some good spots where um you know they were inside the coffin and you know they had just hands sticking out or just a leg or you oh. know which that was th- those were cool moments but at the same time again that's kind of all you can really do with a coffin match there's really not much else you can do with it do you remember when we were watching and at the end so Spoiler for the ending. They again. What is this show for? But yeah, to, go to talk give it to about Darby. It. Yeah. So Darby <laughs> slams it, you know, and Swerve is inside. But when they s- slammed it, and it was the official ending, some of Swerve's hair was sticking out. And I said, I said, Shelby, I said, how much do you want to bet there are going to be people on the internet that are going to be like, hey, me, 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 his hair, his hair is a part of his body. <laughs> Who was the first person to say that to me? Me. No. <laughs> Well, yes, you. It was me. But outside of this, who was the first person to say that exact same thing? Was it Robert? Absolutely, my husband. Yeah. I was like, Robert, you... <sighs> he, he's right, though, because I said the same thing. His hair is a part of his body, so like... then therefore, the match is still going on right now. <laughs> because it's not over yet, because his hair was outside of it. Also, I know that hurt. 
Oh God! I know that hurt like a mofo. Yeah. Like just, just if my hair gets stuck in a like a hair clip, it hurts like. Uh huh. Oh, a coffin. Oh no. Nope. Yeah, mm-hmm. just the like the nope, nope, the nope. feeling of my daughter wrapping her tiny little hands <gasps> around Dude, my hair. Got, she's got some and grit. pulling. Ooh. I just imagine that like. Tenfold. Tenfold. Yeah. Yeah. Like just, I can't. Mm mm. But, but it's where so, we respect you. Yes. Poor thing. <laughs> He was probably screaming in, in that coffin, I would Bro, imagine. I would have been saying some bad words. So I gave this a three and a half. I, I went three, I mean, but yeah. It Again, it was it was good. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying that it's not watchable. Yeah, like, no, no, it no. Was, it was really good. It was just... It's, it's perfectly watchable. Again, it's another match that I feel like could have been cut. Easily. Easily. Could have been put on a dynamite, maybe even a rampage. Yep. You know, so I just... They could have well, even saved They it. could have put it on collision because Darby's on collision now. And so Look, is Christian. You know so what? So it could have worked. Hold up. Now I'm mad. Because <laughs> if they hadn't have done this match, then it would have been AR Fox in it. If they just freaking waited. Yeah. <gasps> you're right. Bro, now Tony. Bruv. Bruv. <laughs> bruv. <laughs> bruv. Speaking, now I'm mad. Speaking of bruv. Speaking of bruv. Our next match. <laughs> Look. Okay. Mm. That was a really good segue, That by was the a way. very that good was really segue. Good. Um, Thanks, bruv. We have Chris Jericho versus Will Ospreay. Mm-mm. Now, first off, I was really looking forward to this because I freaking love Will Ospreay. I've loved Will Ospreay. You can do no wrong. From his PWG days. Like, mm-hmm. I have, he is by far one of the best singles competitors in the world. Oh, like, bar none. Bar none. So he has beaten um, Kenny Omega, Kota Ibushi. And now Chris Jericho yeah. in a two month span. Like, like, and he is like, I think he's my age. He is. I'm pretty sure he's around my age. I think so. No, I think he, yeah, well, we'll Google it. But my thing was, is that as soon as he started talking about his son, I was like, I'm here. I'm here for it. Yeah. So basically in the, in the lead up yeah. to this, um, it just was just an, a shoot. an amazing shoot from, yeah, he's 30. 30. Yeah. Geez. Um, so this amazing shoot promo the week before this, he's talking about, you know, why he, he wants to do this match and why he needs to do it. Because if he beats Chris Jericho, he would have beaten, you know, Omega, Ibushi and, um, Jericho in a two month span. And he would get top billing wherever he goes, which means more money to put his son through school. And, and it was who just can't love that? it was just so endearing, who but can't? also like he's such a scrappy human being. He really that is. That you you literally are like, oh you you do have a nice soft side. Yeah, like because he, the he shit got, that he you, got crazy eyes. The shit that you say sometimes. And the shit that you do. I'm like you so now you are actually uh, an example for somebody? <laughs> <laughs> because I've heard some of the shit that you have said on interviews. It's a little rough. It's a little rough. <laughs> um, but then we find out later that it's his stepson. It's not even his biological which, son, which I feel like is even like another <sighs> layer of like Swoon. like chivalry that you're just like, oh, you don't even have to pay for this kid. Like he's not even technically yours. But he has fully claimed that child as his yeah, own. And which, he's never in anything else said anything but son. Yeah. Which, which is on. just so Who's, great. Who doesn't swoon for that? So it's another side of him that oh. you've like never seen before. So it's like he has so many like so such depth to and his you know he character. Pulled out his butt. Oh, of course. Who knows if his if this person if this son's even real? <laughs> you know what I mean? He probably is real. I, I think so. But I think I've seen pictures of his his lady. Just saying, we've had MJF pull some shit before. That is true. That we're like, is that real? Could they do a shoot off? I would love to see that. Bruv. 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 Now, the reason why we're saying that is because Will Ospreay said that about 50 times he during was, his promo. He, that and, like, they also talked about chavs, which is, I, I had to explain that to Shelby. I didn't know what that yeah, meant. I it, was like, that seems very derogatory. It's a, it's a very specific type of person um, and, like, dressing in a, an appearance style in England. You um, equated it to, like, our version of Jersey Shore. Yes, it's very yes. specifically, like, you know, very, like, like much darker makeup. Like, um, you know, big hoop earrings, like, you know, big, like, poofy hair, like, mm-hmm. stuff like that. Like, but... I'm pretty sure there's a show... Oh, yeah. ...about that. Oh, yeah. That's like the... It's like the English version... Oh, yeah. ...or British version of Jersey Shore. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't, I wouldn't doubt it for a second. But, look, I'm going to say this. I didn't... Mm-mm. No. I did not like this match. You I, didn't? I... I, I 
I didn't like this match because I know what Osprey can do. Right. And look, Jericho upset me the moment he walked out. Like, yes. Oh, we all knew it was going to be a glorified, like, Fozzie concert. We got that. That yeah. was fine. Solid. Thank you. But if you're going to do the call and response from Freddie Mercury's concert of Queen, <laughs> for God's sake, please hit at least three-fourths of those notes because you sure as hell didn't. Well, and that well, he, already I was like, oh, he he did that and then didn't hit hardly any of the notes for his actual song. Amen so, to that. So which I'll give him I'll give him props like walking to the ring yes. and singing. Oh, yeah. Quite difficult thing to Absolutely. do. Absolutely. And especially he at his age, like that is a difficult thing to do. And then go and perform a match after that. Yes. I'm just saying everybody knows this song. Let him sing. He, everybody sings the entirety of that chorus. I mean, really, the entirety of that song. Yeah. As he's walking to the ring. And he's done that for forever. Have the crowd of 81,000 people help you sing the song. Yeah. Right? Like, they're already going to be louder than you anyway. Yeah. And now, I'll give it to Fozzie. They were great. They were great. They were awesome. The band was awesome. I just, I, I hate, I hate it. I hate it. I hate that it was the performance was lackluster because whenever that does happen, whenever you have live music for an entrance, like it has to be, it has to be perfect or else it kind of sets the tone for the match That's, because then it just kind of looks like a glorified, like karaoke fest a little bit. I, in my mind, I literally went, this is foreshadowing. Like as soon as that happened, because I was like, mm. <laughs> because of his performance, it was going to lose. <laughs> no, just the the tone of what that match oh, was going to be. Ma- yeah, absolutely. The match itself, like she's alluding to, like it just. Again, I was really looking forward to this. Yes, because Jericho has really been on a run lately of having really good matches. This one just did not hit for me at all. Like it was a he flop. was it was slow. It was, it was like, very, I wouldn't even say lethargic. Yeah, it was very uh, calculated. Like, you could see the spots forming and happening. Like, I've seen both of them do better, but I would put the blame more on Jericho Absolutely. than Osprey. Just because Osprey was just trying to reach where he was just and to, meet him where he was. To, to almost to pump him up, in a sense. Yeah, and again... Don Callis didn't really play much of a role in this one either. Like, I just don't... They could have had so much more fighting. They could have had so much more bullshit. Like, not even shenanigans. Not even, like, messing, like, you know, like, fully messing, like, with a match. But no. just, like, just when you... talking crap. Like, you know, just yelling at each other. Just, you know, like, making faces. Like... Well, when you've had the buildup, like, they've had, like, Don Callis has been trying to court Jericho to his group for ages now, and Jericho completely dissolved the JAS. To, to do it become a part of it yes and don essentially reveals that he didn't think jericho was going to say yes so he was going to have him jumped yeah by osprey which i still don't understand why he recruited i think it was just a tool to have this match happen because this match just needed to happen yeah i mean it was but, supposed to happen that's what jericho said in his promo a couple weeks ago yeah he was like, so this they was just insert him into this view yeah. here which I mean, fine, whatever, but it just didn't make much sense to me. It wasn't very organic, but Don Callis just didn't, they didn't interact with Jericho at all, really. Didn't really interact with Osprey. He was just at there. All. And he just, he just walked to the ring with him and then walked out when he won. Mm-hmm. Which, Sammy was with Jericho, which he didn't do jack shit during this either. And he, he looked bored. He did. He Thank looked you. straight up bored. Oh, I thought that was just me. No, to me, oh. it looked like he wasn't given any direction on just what go to out do. There. Just go out there. And again, normally someone who can take crumbs and make a meal out of it, mm-hmm. he just really didn't do much either. So this one, I don't know. I was really disappointed in this one. Honestly, I gave this a two. You gave it a two. Okay, I, I wouldn't give it a two. I gave it a three and a half because yeah. it was mm. there were still some good spots, some good meat on Osprey, the bones. But if I give it a, the point, then it would be three for Osprey. But yeah, yeah, I mean, like that's it. So, I mean, Osprey wins decisively uh, with very easily two Stormbreakers in a row, and he just leaves, and there's no interaction with Jericho at all. He nope. just completely rolls out of the ring. Starts walking back to Callis. 
<coughs> excuse me. And um, really, there was more interaction at the end of the match with him and with Jericho and Sammy than Osprey and Jericho because yeah. Jericho pushed Sammy away when he tried to comfort him. Which I'm like, okay, at this point, I don't even care. Like, nope. you already made Sammy look really weak for going back to him anyway. D- y- yes. So I mm. clearly there's there's going to be more with them. Oh, yeah. No, now Sammy's going to be like, you know what I'm doing? I was there a few minutes. Which, whatever. Don't care. Yeah. Your wife already left the group, so now you look like a dick. You know? <laughs> like... Your pregnant wife. Yeah, who you didn't leave with, and you're like, no, Jericho's my friend. You it's know? like, oof. You know, whatever. Someone's sleeping on the couch. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, three, three and a half. I don't know. Mm. I really... I, I, I hate that I'm giving it such a low score, because I had really high expectations for it, but... Hopefully, we'll see more of Osprey, and he'll be with. I mean, selfishly, I would love if he went against Adam. That would be that would be a breathtaking great. Match. But I I don't think Adam is ready after his injuries for that yet because that is that's gonna be that's a goal that's a build up cr- a crazy high intensity fast paced match. Yes. Um. But that's just my fantasy booking over here. I could imagine it. Yeah. It'd be lovely. <laughs> in, some, in some world. Mm. Um, okay, so this is our... We're almost there. Um, <laughs> this is our <laughs> semi-main. I always talk... Whenever we review There's AEW, so much... I always make it sound like, okay, we're almost done, guys. I promise. Sometimes it's a marathon, though, man. It really is. I but mean, also, I had a lot to talk about today, so that was my part, so my bad. So. Watching this one, though, it really did feel like it flowed a lot better than yes. some of them have. But still, I mean, 10 matches is a lot to get through in, in one sitting. Yeah. Um, so our semi-main is the Trios Championship match, which is the House of Black versus the Acclaimed and Badass Billy Gunn. So I have mixed feelings about this one, too. Mm-hmm. Because I like the Acclaimed, but I feel like House of Black was just starting to gain momentum with these titles because I feel like they've kind of been spinning their wheels a bit. I know. With this house rules matches and no one really understands what the rule is. and The, the rule is that they get to do whatever they want. Sometimes they do the rules, sometimes they don't. Like, it's just... They finally, I felt like we're starting to really get some traction yeah. as a group again. Because they just, they debuted and then I just feel like they just didn't know what to do with them. And now, now yeah. they've had the titles taken away from them. And now I'm just scared that they're going to go back to that yeah. spot again. Because they that. needed the titles. The Acclaim didn't need the titles. They didn't. They don't need a title to be over. Because they are they're so they over. Have, they have not ha- held the tag titles for such a long time that I don't even remember what their run was like. Yeah. Right? But I don't. But it doesn't matter. Because I think it was against their, his actual sons. Oh, yes, it was. It was against the, the, the guns. Because the, the guns have it, right? Yeah, the ass boys. The ass boys. Um, but no, that, that's not their name now, David. That's their, that was their name before. They're, they're the guns now. He's like, right. Uh-huh. <laughs> He's like, yeah, don't care. Um, but I don't know. I just felt like they didn't, like, this now has stopped any momentum that House of Black had because they needed the titles way more. I also felt very awkward about that that Scissor Me Timbers move on oh, on Julia. Yeah, I didn't. That was interesting because it's like they, that's like the joke is like that it's like on guys like that's the joke. It's the whole joke, right? Am I wrong? No, it is. Yeah. So yeah. to have it actually be on a woman, that's kind of weird. Well, and it. Okay, this like, is this is gonna sound really strange, but go with me on this. Okay, I'm here. I'm feel, buckling in my seat. I feel like with doing that move on a female makes it more sexual. Yeah, because they have they have made it funny. They've not made it a sexual thing. Yeah, with it being just a just the guys like the, doing it. Well, the sexual which is yeah, it's which there. has made it funny because it's an innuendo. Yeah, but then when you move having it done having bowens do it on to julia yeah it again just by saying that it makes me feel kind of uncomfortable yeah. because 
<laughs> because it makes it innately more sexual. Well, also, especially if you've already had this bit where, you know, he's come out and said, no, I'm gay. Well, put, put, turned, putting that aside, that aside, that doesn't, that doesn't matter. Well, no, but like, like, it's just still like an extra layer of like, why then? Like, why do It doesn't this? make sense, right? None of it. Like, wh- okay, you could have done that on literally any of them. I, but. Cause, like, but why her? Because you had Julia interfere when she pulled Aubrey out of the ring. Yes. She could have just done that. That's fine. That would have been fine. Or done another move. They have other finishers. Yeah. They have other tag team moves. You know, I just, I don't know. I also, I also felt a little uncomfortable. It was awkward. And also like the outfit that she was wearing was like very scandalous. It was something, On girl. top Hey-o. of doing that. And I'm just like, Hey-o. okay. I, I, I felt like it was kind of poor taste a little bit. Oh, but we didn't talk about how they came out. How they came out and what they had with them. Who? The uh, House of Black. Oh, yes. Sorry, I meant to say that in no, the beginning. No, I totally forgot. Um, so, uh, if you're listening to this, um, last this previous week, um, we lost Bray Wyatt, um, which has been a very, very hard week for our entire group. Devastating. Um, it is, I think it was Thursday of, of this was. past week um, when we found out. <sighs> um, he, The news came out that he had passed away from heart complications uh, due to COVID-19. Um, that he was 36. He, that he had gotten, you know, previously and then it ex- exacerbated a heart condition and he had a heart attack. I think that was the official oh. cause of death was a heart attack. Um, and yes, it, like Gina said, he was 36 years old. So <sighs> there was a, a lot, obviously, with... Bray Wyatt that was unfinished um a lot that we could have seen and he could have done more and he act- he impacted a lot of people he in the a wrestling lot of people's world lives. um throughout every company like it doesn't matter who you worked for mm-hmm. like everyone was touched by him in some way and influenced by him a lot of people have gone on record to say that they have pulled influence from him um and House of Black has uh, Malachi Black, who was formerly Alistair Black mm-hmm. in WWE, and Buddy Matthews, who formerly Buddy Murphy, mm-hmm. who both had contact and worked with Bray um, and had a connection with him. So to honor him in their entrance, um, they brought out a lantern, which mm-hmm. is something that Bray used in his uh, in his character. Yeah. Um, it was a staple in every single character he ever did, whether he was Bray Wyatt, the cult leader, whether he was the fiend, he had some form of lantern. Yep, a um, light was present. Right, because he was the leader of the Fireflies, yes. right? And so House of Black already has, um, during their entrance, um, people doing something that's very similar to the Fireflies, mm-hmm. which is when some when they you take your phone and you turn the flashlight on and then you turn around and makes it look like there's a bunch of fireflies in the audience which i mean when bray did it it was was breathtaking and amazing and you know house of black Mm. it has just kind of naturally um happened because the arena goes black yeah whenever they enter um and fans just naturally started doing it which is what happened with bray it wasn't something that he coordinated um so they had the lantern and brought it out and set it at the top of the ramp and everybody acknowledged it. Yeah. Um, and then they walked to the ring. And which uh, was I commentary even said they were like, "This is for yeah." They Bray Wyatt. they explained they said, what it was, yes. and which I absolutely love because it just shows how much he impacted the wrestling community as a whole, and not just WWE. Exactly. And how it shows how how small the wrestling world actually is. It's something that we talk about in theater all the time. Yes. Where it seems like the world of theater is so vast and the world of movies and Broadway and, you know, all that stuff is mm-hmm. so big and unattainable. But then when you look at it through a linear lens, everybody knows everybody and everybody works with everybody and everybody has relationships with people in different mm-hmm. companies and different states and different, you know, whatever you want to call it. Like everybody looks out for one another in one way yes. or another. So the wrestling community I've seen is very much like that. So it was really nice to see that tribute, but also just like everybody (laughs) reacting the way that they have. And I think House of Black was a perfect uh, 
group to do a tribute for that. It was beautiful. Yeah. It was very nice. But I I hate that the the match itself. Now I mean it it was it was fine. Mm-hmm. Like you had like I I wrote down the finish. I kind of um wrote it out. It was um Brody King kicks out of the arrival and mic drop, which are the two yeah. um finishers for the acclaimed and he kicks out at one. Yeah, that was pretty, for both of those, which is such a great spot when it's used appropriately. Like if you do it too much, then it kind of becomes kind of lackluster. Like Joe did that with CM Punk in that match, like earlier, and uh-huh. that was also really nice. Exactly. Like when, you, when it's done right. Ooh. Exactly. Chef kiss. But then immediately after that, they do that sequence again, and then they win the match. Oh, I didn't notice that. So he doesn't kick out. Right after he kicks out at one. Yeah, that's weird. You know, I thought it was really weird. Hmm. And that's how the Acclaim win the match. Hmm. Which I think is, again, I've, I said at the top of this, I feel like it's a weird choice to have them win. But I also feel like it's a weird choice to have them win because of Billy Gunn. Because they had teased that he was retiring. Yeah, like, and how now, does this work? How does this fit? I don't understand. Well, and now the Acclaimed are now tied to Billy Gunn. Yeah. So now they can't really do much of anything until he leaves. Which, at so, this point, can he know? I, not until they drop the titles. That's weird. Which, again, there's another pay-per-view this weekend. They may drop the titles. <laughs> that would be intense. I'm just, I'm just saying. It, it's Ooh. a possibility. But, I mean, I gave this a three and a half. It was fine, but... Your your three and a half is the middle of the road. It is. It's my middle of the road. It was fine. (laughs) I didn't hate it, but it wasn't great. I don't know. Have you ever gone down below a three and a half? I have. I I have given a fin match a two before. Oh, that's right, because we cried about it. Mm Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. It was a sad day. That was. I hated myself afterward, but I I have to be honest. And we talked about it afterward, and he understood. You know, it's fine. (laughs) He gave you a personal call. He's like, babe. I mean, he is my original wrestling husband. What? So yes, that's we, right, that's we're right. still on speaking terms. <laughs> so it's fine. But, okay. So right. are we ready to talk about this final match? Because this is going to, we're going to have to. I'm going to. We're going to have to go through this one pretty quickly because we're already let's at just, time. <laughs> let's just go ahead and have a little fangirl. Oh, my gosh. This, just wow. <gasps> just absolute wow. This like, is... I'm going to bury the lead. I gave it a five. I gave it a five. I'm just going to. That's, that's what I was saying, because I couldn't give the uh, the Stampede match a four and a half, because this is literally everything. This is like the Princess Bride of wrestling matches. <laughs> like, it has it has comedy. It has, you know, like, really, like, dark, low moments. It has uh-huh. real, like, intense character love and, you know, passion, like, everything like was executed perfectly the timing was fantastic and it just it just flowed so amazingly and we we thought we knew yeah we thought we knew what was going to happen i sat there like and then all of a sudden like stuff started happening and i was like oh no no this is going to happen wait no 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 no, this is going to happen it's like (laughs) i could i was like a kid in a candy store just like i don't know what's going to happen i don't care because it doesn't matter because we won this match oh everybody won we all won this match so just you know flashback to the beginning of the night where <laughs> Adam Cole and MJF are now tag champions together. ROH tag champs. And they bring those to the ring. Yes. Which MJF has the, you know, one on his shoulder and one around his waist. And, you know, I just, I feel like the overarching theme of everyone, what everybody was saying about this match was who's going to turn on who. Yes. And the answer to that was nobody. But it was teased, but it It was, was teased so, very heavily. But so good. at the end, when all was said and done, nobody officially turned on the other. None of them which did. Which I feel like in any other circumstance, they would have, the crowd would have hated this. Like it would have been a cop out. They almost lost them it w- because Ooh. they had a double pin that happened. Dude, I and they flipped out. And they and Bryce Ribsberg literally goes over to Justin Roberts and is like, "Hey, it's a double pin, so it's a it's a draw." Because they after collapsed like on each other, a th- half an hour of a match, because they colla- they they collapsed on each other, and Bryce counted one, two, three, and they both had their shoulders down, and they both had arms over each other because they just were done, right? Or were they? So they they did the double pin and they added additional time because Adam said 
five more minutes. Well, and that's a callback it to is. the first match that they had that ended in a time, like, or the and, time ran out, which never happens during a match. You always hear them say at the beginning of every AEW match, you know, this is, um, you know, this match is, will one be via pinfall or a, time. until time limit. But no one ever does the time limit no. stipulation. And so that's what made that so flipping good. Yeah, so I know you were so mad about that, but it was awesome. Oh, I was. At the, in the moment, I was. But, but it, it ended up being probably one of the coolest things. Because it was such a cool callback to this. And because just like that. Because uh, initially, in the first time, that in the first match that they did this, MJF said no. And he said no and, and just walked out. And he said no again. But he said no to the five minutes. Because he said it was gonna be as long as it took to have a winner in fucking Wembley that's what he said <laughs> direct quote and I've never heard more f-bombs drop during a match than during this match seriously they <laughs> let him have it it was fantastic they, it was like they literally said backstage like you know what just say whatever you want like mjf is like done he was like got oh, it I understood the assignment for you? <laughs> how much money are we making for you exactly I mean, I'm going to go get a kangaroo kick shirt right after this. Um, so, but I also love the the Roderick Strong of it all. Because, y'all, <laughs> He's so who, bad. who who is our Roderick Strong's least, like, like who is, like, your number one hater? Like, oh, Shelby, Shelby Patterson yeah, is I, his I, number one hater. I hate Roderick Strong. She I have gone stand him. on record for years on this show, because we've been doing this show for years now, if you can believe it. I know. We, I have said so many times that I hate this man because he cannot talk on the he mic. He can't. He is so good in the ring. But He's he can't so act good. worth a damn. You give him a mic and it's like a baby learning to walk. <laughs> like he just, he is stumbling and he is trying It's like that kindergartner that's trying to tell a story and then they get stuck and they get stuck and they get stuck and mm-hmm. they get stuck and they get stuck. <laughs> that's exactly what it is. What it is. And now they've added this stupid neck brace on him. It just and it makes him look even stupider. <laughs> so he runs he runs down to the ring and I'm trying. your best friend, Adam. I'm your real best friend. And literally Adam just goes, Roddy, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> like just just go. Like what are you doing here? Because he tried to hand him the belt yeah. to hit MJF with. Well, and, and that comes into play, you know, later. Yeah. Because Roger comes back a few times. He does. Oh, that's right. That was near the end. Yes. Yeah, so the, the first one he did, it was like he was just trying to get him to like get his attention yeah. and be like, no, leave him to come to me. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my God, I hate it. Oh I hate this whiny, like, pick me bullshit. Like, it's so, <laughs> so bad, but I'm supposed to hate it. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. So, really, it did. is he. Is like this all is he the illusion? greatest wrestler of all time no he's not but is he working me to death probably yeah. yeah so so anyway he comes back out and he's like here here's the title hit him in the face because the ref gets knocked out he which doesn't also care about you bryce rimsberg takes bryce? the best bump from any ref i've ever seen ever. in my life in history he took a panama sunrise he and it, it, you couldn't have landed that more beautifully. Because he, like, Adam went to go do um, do a Panama Sunrise on MJF. MJF pushes push. Bryce into it instead, and it's just perfect. And he's not knocked out for a good five. Like, good five minutes. I mean, he was dead. Yeah. He was D-E-D dead. And he, they were, like, yelling at him and, like, trying to get him to wake nah, up. But he was, was out gone. cold. Soul was gone. So while all of that, after that had happened... Rod, Roger, happened was. Roger comes back <laughs> out and is like, hit him with the belt, like, refs out cold, like, yeah. hit him with the belt, and he can't do it. I, but because he can't do it, MJF rolls him up for the win. Yes. And it's a simple roll-up, which makes me question, if Roger Strong had not done that, would MJF have won? Yeah. Because he, because he that, did it off of a distraction. So here's the other thing, and I'm going to add to that, because... When MJF had Adam Cole on the announce table, he was going to do that drop, that that one spot. I, uh-huh. I said it wrong the other like, pile driver. Pile driver. Thank you. Mm-hmm. He was going to do the pile driver, and he couldn't. He was like, oh, I can't do it, my best friend. And immediately Adam grabbed him and did it without hesitation. No hesitation. <laughs> None. 
Which no problem. Hey, if this means that we're gonna get heal Adam, I'm here for it. It is. It's. I'm here it's for it. It's on the cusp, man. It's right there. It is. It is like breathing to him. I mean, but honestly, I feel like you could still be like they could be friends, and he just be a heel now because MJF's a heel. That's fine. It's fine. He's great. Just but MJF guys. is so over as a baby face right I know. now. <laughs> what has happened? What is this What life? alternative universe have we stepped into <gasps> that but, MJF is now a baby face? But seriously, if if you buy this, this is the match that it's this. Mm-hmm. I, I Which have, as it, this is how it should be. Yes. The match, the reason why you buy a pay-per-view is because of the main event. Yes. That's the reason why you should buy it. That's like the whole, that should be the whole incentive for you to buy this. It, yes. If you're yes. making up other excuses to see other matches. Sure, uh, but anyway. the whole reason why you should buy a whole pay-per-view full of eight matches is because of the main event. That if So they've done their job. Bare minimum. In hyping this match up because they've, I mean. You couldn't have built this more beautifully. Yeah. Like this. I, <laughs> I just love it because I wrote down, at the end of the match, Adam was but hurt. <laughs> And MJF tried to cheer him up with the tag titles. That's right. And Adam throws them. To the, and he had a little bit of, of a pissy fit. And he had a bitch fit. He did. He did. He had a little temper tantrum. Um, and then MJF is like, well, fine. You just didn't even love me. You never cared about me. <laughs> F you. It's fine. I knew this would happen. And so it was all about this, right? Yeah. And he's holding up the title and he throws. He's like, fine. Fucking take it. And then he's like, all you want to do is hit me with it, so just hit me. And he turns around and holds his arms up. And just like, like Adam did. Just do it. This and is so, what you really want to do, so like, just and, hit me. And of course, somehow on the on the sideline, once again, Roderick Strong came back and he's like, <laughs> he's like yeah, do it, do it. <laughs> <laughs> and, but he doesn't do it. And he can't do it. And they hug it out. Dude, that's And the, they're still best friends. That was the... <laughs> I felt that <laughs> hug from the bottom of my soul. Like, that was a real hug, too. Yeah. Like, it wasn't like a, you know, like, that was like a, like, they were talking to each other hug. Like, so that here, was a, ooh, Here's what I, I think fee-fees. is going to happen. I think that now they're like, okay, we are actual fray phrase now. Mm-hmm. Like, you, Boo-boos. I, I couldn't beat you. <laughs> Boo-boo, baby. So, but we have these other titles now. So, now, I think the kingdom, who is backing up Roderick Strong. That's going to come to That's play. That's going to be their next feud. Very nice. Which, I mean, I'm fine with that. Mm-hmm. And we can put, you know... You'll just have to curb your enthusiasm for Roderick. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> if he sits... If he's just in the background in this stupid-ass neck brace for the foreseeable future, I'm okay with it, to be honest you know with you. he's not going to be. I know, but one, a girl can drink. I want okay? him to throw another TV. <laughs> Yeah, he just th- he throws TV screens. He has no regard for property. None. Like it just, yeah, it's bad. It's bad. It's, it's bad. bad, but is it good though? That's the thing. Well, I think that's, that's the part that that's a whole you off. other episode. I think we could get into. Yes, but I think that's what it's probably setting up for. Very fair. But again, there's another pay per view this weekend, so I don't even know what's on the card for no, this one. I think honestly. Wednesday's going to set it up. Well, I, that's the only time that they can. They got set Wednesday it up. and they got Friday. But I mean, overall, for the whole pay per view, I gave it a four. Yeah. Because Solid four. there were more hits than misses. And the ones that did miss, they missed like, I don't know. It was like a foul ball. They didn't completely miss. <laughs> it, was, it was in the realm of still being like, okay, like I watch this, but like it's, yeah. Yeah. It doesn't move me. <laughs> it doesn't move <laughs> me, per se. It's, it's, not, it's not a vibe. <laughs> not a vibe. <laughs> not a vibe. <laughs> All right, segment time. Let's go. Who is your ignorant slut? I, hmm, this was a hard one for me. Because I feel bad because it was not for me. I want to... I'm going to be petty. I'm going to do it. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. The booking of the women's match. That's fair. Just the booking in general. Like, just do better. Yeah. Like, I know I feel like I keep... I'm a broken record with whenever we do AEW shows, but... And really, with WWE recently, like, just everybody. Book your women's division better. Like, come on. Like, they can be draws. They have been draws in the past. I mean, women have headlined WrestleMania, for God's sakes. Like, it can happen. Like... Like, you you can do better. You just don't want to put in the work and put in the time. Yeah. Like, you have the... You have talent. 
that you can work with and you're just not doing it. Yeah. So, and they're on the wayside. And the reason why people think that the women's division isn't good is because you are making them think that they're not good because you're not doing a good job booking them. That's true. So that's fair. That that's a whole lot of it is perception, mm-hmm. right? So if you don't book it properly, then you're going to think the women's division is shit. So that's my ignorance slut and yeah. will be for AEW if they don't get their shit together. That's fair. <laughs> Who is your ignorance slut for this? Jericho. Oh, <laughs> now here's my thing. Here's my thing. If you are going to beg for this match mm. for years and years and years, and you are just so desperate, show up. Yeah. Show up. Honestly, this was the first time watching Jericho where I was like, I think it's time for him to retire. Yeah. I for real felt that. I, I looked at it and I was like, he could go to commentary. He could go just be a manager, have no problem doing that. Have a feud with Don Callis as a manager. <laughs> like there's so many options. Like I sat there and I was like, I would not be sad if he stepped away from the ring because I hope that he can go out on a better match. Than this, I, though. I would like that as well, but this, yeah. this, this put the seed of doubt in my head. Sure. And it was a strong one. Well, yeah, especially when you have Sting and Christian Cage on this Wait, same card. Yes. Who we didn't even really talk about their performances, but like no, we they didn't. were stellar. Like so, mm, when you have as long as Sting doesn't go on top of the ropes, he's fine. <laughs> Just don't put him on the damn ropes. When you have when you have those two, it's kind of a stark contrast. Yeah. But yeah, I, I, kn- agree. I know Osprey can do better, and I know it wasn't him. Sorry, Jericho. Yeah, sorry, Jericho. <laughs> you are my ignorance, lot. Oh man. Well, my EST. It, this was a hard one. Yeah. But Orange Cassidy, man. Yeah. It was between I him. I thought you were going to get Trent. So Trent's my honorable mention. Trent. Trent Barrella, props to you. Like, again, you no, he is my Johnny Gargano award. Remember, that's, we were going to start doing that. That's fair. Um, so yes. he, he is my Johnny Gargano award. That's fair. Because he just, again, has no regard for his body. No. And apparently that is like top marks in my book. Yeah. Um, but he... He just was stellar. And when someone, again, is willing to just be like, hey, I'll do it. Yeah. You know, even though, like, my body will be sore for, like, a week afterward. But I'll do it. It's, it's fine. fine. It's fine. Um, so, yeah, he was my Johnny Gargano yeah. award. Um, Orange Cassidy, just that that blood orange punch, which is what we're calling that it. Sick, we're man. Hey, if they, David, if they start calling it that. We are writing a letter. We, we, we are getting royalties. royalties on that. Um, but yeah, just, just that, that whole spot and just him in a match like this when he just drops his whole, you know, lackluster, not lackluster, but you know what I mean, like lackadaisical demeanor yeah. and just goes. Yeah. Like he really is one of the best is people so that they have on that roster right now. He's unreal. And I'm so glad that they are finally using him I'm to his potential. I'm glad that, like... Comedy wrestler yeah, phase. Like he, he can do it. Yeah. He's great. But it's nice seeing him where he belongs. It is, yeah. So, Orange Cassidy, congratulations. I think All this is right. your first EST award. And congrats to Trent Beretta for your first Johnny Gargano award. <laughs> so, my Johnny Gargano award is Mox. Mm. There's nothing... like. That he's just gonna be in I'm every time. Have, I feel like for AEW. So I promise. I promise. Not every time. I will not allow okay. myself to make it. But there, I will have nightmares of those spikes sticking out of his head. When you look like a pin cushion, the, you that, know, like the, I feel like that's you uh, know warranted. I, I had to walk away yeah. from your living room. I had to do paces. Yeah, like it was insane. That's my Johnny Gargano because that that is a nasty that's shit. Crazy. I've ever seen. But my. EST is Adam Cole, baby. <gasps> what? <laughs> Explain yourself. <laughs> I fell for Adam's shit so many times in that match uh-huh. that I was 110% worked. I kept thinking that he was, like, immediately I was like, he's the bad guy. He's going to do it. He's going to turn it. It's going to be it. This is it. Like I, and then I would like go back and forth and be like, wait, no, and this, like he worked me so hard that I, like my heart rate monitor consistently stayed at, I think it was like 105 to 18, like 108. Holy like shit. my heart rate 
was up, y'all. Yeah. Like, and then to be able to do that to Bryce Rimsburg and to have Bryce Rimsburg trust you that wholeheartedly, mm. that's a big honor. Mm-hmm. Adam Cole is a phenomenal human being who has the phenomenal just trajectory ahead of him. He can do no wrong now. Like, he can't. Yeah. He's awesome. I'm so glad. I'm so happy. I know. I know. (laughs) I think also Lottie kind of influenced me because Lottie was crying and boo-hooing and she would not do anything until I turned and faced her to watch the match because she was mad because we were letting her watch it. And every time Adam got hit, she would would start to whimper a little bit. So, Adam, I know you're listening, right? Yes. Yes, honey. Hi. Congratulations, EST. My two-month-old daughter has a crush on you. Oh, okay. She was very concerned every time that you got hit. Now, I don't know if she registers anything that's going on right now, but it was very clear that it was whenever MJF hit you, she knew. Um, So, yes. You got onesies? (laughs) You got baby onesies? Um, if they do, they're going to just take all my money. Yeah. There's, I'm just going to be broke. I, I really can't have them make onesies with Bebe on it Adam. because she will literally have one for every stage of her life. And it will be the best thing ever. <laughs> oh, man. But well, yes. con- well, congratulations. Congratulations to the winners. Congratulations to the losers. <laughs> to the ignorant sluts. Because you get, you get congrats, too. Yeah. Congratulations. But yeah, it's no, like this, a Razzie Award. This one was fun. This was I, I enjoyed this one a lot. And I mean, hey, we got through this one quicker than I thought we would. So. I felt like we could have really just like we, gone loose. Yeah. So but. I feel like we did pretty great. We, we High pretty, five. Love it. Oh, very nice. Like, Thank you. It wasn't a loud, scary yes. one. So, David, David, what do we have coming up with Long Walk Productions? I know probably a hell of a lot. <laughs> oh, um, nothing. Nothing. Um, false. <laughs> no. Um, I, we have not had any time, as I didn't think we would, uh, to record a, a Long Walk Talks. Oh, sure. Of um, course. In this month of August. So, we're going to have to knock Stan's final episode out uh, in September. Um, we apparently have another uh, <laughs> AEW pay-per-view coming up next weekend. Um, we also have a WWE pay-per-view as well that oh. same weekend because they oh. just love to do that to us on Memorial <clears throat> and Labor Day weekends. Yeah. They just love to double up on us. They, they do. do. I won't be able to see either of them. So we have All Out and Payback for WWE. Because even though Sunday is a matinee, we got to load out afterwards. And Gina, you saw that set. Yes, I did. Yes. It's beautiful. Yeah. It is beautiful. I have seen pictures of it. It's, it's very beautiful. But extensive. Yeah. So um and I mean that's it for right now. Uh mm-hmm. we'll we'll figure out what's going on uh business wise with Long Walk once a soldier's play is over. I've got a, a short film that I'm working on. Yeah. Um Race but car. Taco Cat. <laughs> taco cat. <laughs> um <laughs> But yeah, that but that's pretty much it. Um, Shelby, if people want to reach out to you online or follow you online, where can they do that at? Um, you can reach out to me personally on Instagram only um, at Slay All Ray. Um, I will warn you, it's a lot of my pictures of my daughter right now. And she's adorable um, and it's but worth it. Yeah, I mean, she's great. She's awesome. But um, I think we are officially off Twitter yeah. Now I have kind I of mean, stopped updating our Twitter. I know because we had talked about that the last time well, we were we did this show. With with the whole changes of that too. Oh, I don't want to stand behind it. I no, really don't. So no. we really weren't much on it anyway, no. to be completely honest Sorry, with you. Y'all. So if you want to follow us on Instagram, you can follow us at um, Long Walk Podcast or This Is The Takeover on Instagram. Gina, what about you? I am only on Instagram as well. And that is at Broadway underscore baby 1218. Um, I've been trying to get back, but most, mostly right now, I'm just like kind of like living in the real life. Like just living that real life of just like watching reels. What's that like? It, it's a deep, dark pit of, of... No, I mean living in the real life. <laughs> I'd love to know. <laughs> it sounds like a TV show that was like in the 2000s that's like... You know, that, like, big brother kind of vibe. I mean, I'm just saying maternity leave can get kind of lonely sometimes. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm almost there. I'm almost there. You've got it. It's, you've got it. <laughs> well, what about you, David? Where can they find you? Well, if you want to follow me online, uh, like the two of you, the only place to do that is on Instagram. I have a TikTok that I 
keep saying I'm going to use and never do. <laughs> uh, but you can, yep, you I feel can like follow me. That's the thing uh, to do for TikTok, right? It yeah. is. <laughs> Um, you either have a million videos or you have none. Exactly. Um, but you can follow me on Instagram at DB Hensley. If you want to keep up with the Long Walk Productions, you can visit us online at longwalk.us. To see more of our original work or hear past episodes that are no longer streaming, you can follow the YouTube links in the show notes. Thank you very much for listening. And if you enjoy this show or any of the shows on the uh, Long Walk Podcast Network, please make sure to leave us a rating and a review on whatever platform you are listening on. Thank you, David. And for This is the Takeover, I'm Shelby Ray Patterson. And I'm Gina Bradford. And you don't have to be called up to the main roster. You're doing fine where you're at.